And we're live. Welcome to the Merton Lane ground on a Friday night under the lights. Yeah, hopefully it's going to be a great game here. Uh, weather's good. Uh, pitch is nicely cut well. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, Canterbury have to offer at the beginning of this season. What's your thoughts, James? Well, it's going to be an interesting affair, you know. So, Western Park, where I thought were harshly done by by the Jaws last year. You know, they came fourth in the league. Unfortunately, division below. Spent a lot of money. They've acquired what is a quite a good team this year on paper, you know. So, they're going to be a fierce outfit today. So, a real good one for Cantry right last at the end of the seat, right at the end of pre-season to yeah. get them going again. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's an interesting one, really. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. To be honest with you, because. We had Stortford down here, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was, and was a interesting. really, really tight contest. I thought Canterbury didn't counter up very well that day. Mm. And I thought that they got outplayed in the tight areas by in the 10 and the 12. Um, I didn't think Canterbury was smart enough out there. Um, but with Bestie back in the side in a more prominent position, I hopefully it yeah. might be a bit better. What, what, what did you well, think about the Stortford game? Be, well, to be honest with you, I think with the Stortford game in particular, for me, as you said, there, were, there, was, there, was, there was flashes of brilliance. Um, and but they almost, uh, I think Stortford almost made the made us look a little bit less street savvy than they were. Uh, uh, specifically, ra especially around agree. the ruck. I mean, uh, there was constant sniping around the edges of the ruck, uh, even to the point where I kind of was saying to myself, "Do they actually have a guard? Do they have a jacko in those positions?" Yeah. Didn't seem to think they did. Yeah, completely. We we there was so many periods of the play where we we thought we were setting up multiple phases, and all of a sudden balls turned over mm. and. We've got people set up in a real deep position and all of a sudden we're defending. Yeah, and uh, here's Vinny, and he's the architect yeah. of all of that downfall from the <laughs> other week. <laughs> definitely. What, what, Vinny, come on, give us some insight for what you think is going to happen today. Uh, we need to build on Brighton, definitely. And I didn't see Brighton. Can you give us a little bit of an insight what happened? I think we got dragged down to the opposition's level, but definitely weren't firing on all cylinders, but let's hope we do better tonight. There we go. <laughs> Sean Sweet. Sean yeah. <laughs> yeah, ki killer from Vinny there. <laughs> but yeah, no, so, I mean, he, this is the real last chance to really get it right. Yeah, and I, th and I think there's probably a few players in there who are wanting to get it right. They're wanting to get game time, show what they can do, just to try and push into that, that you know, that all important first team start at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what was really exciting, this first team game, and we've got the two down the road, well, just over the field yeah. at Fanet. We've got the women playing away at Dartford tonight as well, so we've got a lot of rugby for Canterbury, but tell you what is really exciting looking through the Canterbury team sheet for this game and the one over the Sioux over there we've got some real young players coming through so we've got Harvey Furno starting tonight yeah, great. so Harvey played with me last year in the freeze he's a cracking lad he's got bundles of potential yeah. and it's amazing to see some of the lads like that really getting game time yes. getting an opportunity to make it through because I tell you what, when he played with me, he was head and shoulders the best player on the pitch. But let's see what he does tonight. Well, I think it's really good, it's really good that uh, you know, that Corker is looking at these players and giving them these wonderful opportunities. Um, being back with Isha for six years previously wasn't something there was a natural level of progression there. And you have to. You know, we are stuck down in, in the kind of far ends of Kent. It's not the most, you know, people don't want to travel so far. So you've really got to look at those wonderful diamonds in the rough, which are either at the club or nearby clubs. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> we've got one in, in our captain, Jamie Stevens, you know, a homegrown lad, uh, anywhere anywhere from four to eight, he, he'll put the shirt on and <laughs> do a job. And that's the kind of people you want, the guys that are coming through the youth team. Because Canterbury, we're looking at the youth system here, like the minis and juniors. We've got people coming out of our eyeballs. We're like, the kids are like, we haven't got enough room to let them play on a Sunday. But then getting them through to getting them out here on a Saturday is a different question. Yeah, most definitely. Where, where do you think we're kind of, is there a reason we're falling short? <sighs> why why wow. are we not getting those guys who are starting from youth team, not, not getting out here? I mean, there's obvious drop off for university and such. Of course. Like that, but I think generally speaking, there's always going to be, you're always going to find that drop off around about the, between 15, 16, 17 year age, age, age groups. Reason being is very simple. You get to that age, you start to become, you think you, you begin a young adult, you might need to have a job or you want to have a job. Other things start catching your eye. No longer is it about playing rugby with your teammates and that camaraderie. It's now about, oh, that girl looks quite nice. She's just walked past <laughs> or, or other things which they shouldn't be doing. But that's the thing. It's how do you, it's about trying to get their minds again. Look, you know, there is this progression. And I think with Corker and how he's doing it with these young players now, I hope that these players will now see that and continue through yeah, those. I no, agree, because there's, there's some old heads out there today. We've got, we've got, yeah, we've got, we've got, got Tommy Bear kicking about. Uh, Dan, Dave Irvine, we've got 
Well, I mean, Danny Herriot. Danny, I mean, no one knows how old he is. Yeah, I, and, yeah and also yeah. he shaved his head to keep himself looking a little bit younger, it's doesn't very he? Clever. Yeah, yeah. But he's I mean, we still we haven't got Royce Cadman out there. He's the oldest head of them all. Yes. So yeah. we still we still got a few old heads to come back, which is good to see. Well, to good be honest with you, I did see him here earlier on, and he was driving out out of the stadium. Yeah. Uh, and I did ask what the, what on earth he was doing. Um, but uh, I yeah. think he's still got a bit of a niggle. Uh, is it a few, niggle? Few pre- a niggle? Is it marriage or? I don't know, <laughs> yeah, that's there. the niggle. That's yeah, the niggle. yeah. But yeah, there so right. but it's exciting to see that we've got the mix of young and old. Yeah, uh, I think so. Hope, hopefully, it's not always the right blend. Sometimes mm. you have too much youth. Sometimes you have too much experience. Um, hopefully, Canterbury are going to get it right, and we might find the perfect well, blend this uh, year. But yeah, I think for me. It, you're absolutely right. You, the, you need like old heads on the pitch, ones who know what they're doing. Uh, or when it gets that war of attrition, they might go with the idea of let's just play percentage rugby. Let's just get it down in the corners and work from there. But I think the longer we have, in particular, Tom Williams and Frank Reynolds playing together in that linchpin of 9-10, the more they play together, the more they get that partnership going, the better it will be for Canterbury. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So for me, as a vice I think the last year or two, Canterbury have really missed that nine consistent nine and ten. Yes. Nine we've had consistent, but we haven't had someone at ten who's really going to command the game, who's going to like read the game well, who's happy to kick, who's happy to play mm. off the twelve, who's happy to dump it deep for a second second receiver or whatever you want to call it. And we just really haven't had consistency in that position. Frankie came in, didn't really secure the spot himself. His kicking was. A little so bit so hit and so miss yeah, last absolutely. year. And that's what, at uh, 10, you kind of have to be that guy who wants to put their hand up in the air and go, do you know what? Give me the ball. I'm going to kick it. Yeah. And you have to wear it if it doesn't go well, and you have to wear it. Unfortunately, it didn't work so well for him last year. So there's hope. The one thing I'm concerned a little bit about Frankie, I, I'm not sure about his kicking game. Yeah. But well, you've seen yeah. more of him than I have, I imagine. Yeah, you know what? I completely see exactly what you're saying, and definitely in particular last year. I want, I want him to literally, as I said, own that 10 position. Go with the idea that, you know what, I'm confident in what I can do, and if, it, if I do make the mistake, I put my hand up and I go again. Yeah. I think the problem is, is especially when you're a little bit younger, and it is a step up from where, from where he has been playing previously, you make that mistake and you feel really bad. You, you don't think you have the ability to turn those games around. And it was interesting that when we did go up from that two into that one, we had two different types of fly halves because we had Tom Best, a little bit perhaps a little bit more more defensive, and then you had Harvey, Harvey Young who was here. He wanted to play always on that front foot. So it was interesting. It was yeah, almost no, if, you, if you could bend the two agreed, together, agreed. you'd have a great ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's great. And the thing is, we got Charlie Kingsman here coming in at 15. Yep. He's taken a year year or two away from the game. He played back in 2019, 2020 when Cantu were back in that one. Yep. He had a few spells at 10 for us. He's an explosive guy. Mm. We had him and Kyan. They had like nine, ten, yeah. a little, and it was like um, almost just like chaos. You just never knew really what was going to happen. And I think the beauty is they didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so are we going to chip and chase? Are we going to go long? Yeah. What's going to happen here? And both of them had the mental capacity and the sure audacity just to do it. Yeah. And that's, uh, sometimes that's what you want. You just need someone to go, do you know what? I'm just going to do it. There's a, there's a level of, I suppose they call it sod off, don't they? It's a level of sod, off, sod it, I'll just do it. See what happens. Let's see what pays off. And that was the great thing about those guys, absolutely. And we just hope that we, we might find somebody you know, within Canterbury who's going to be that mercurial again and just take us on that little, that little wonderful ride which they can take us on. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and every now and then you just need someone who's going to put their hand above the parapet and just... Well, somebody puts his hand about power, but it's Corks. Corks, can we borrow you for a second, sir? Excellent. It is live. This is live. So remember your language. I, I, my language is Excellent. English. So exactly. we were just talking about having mercurial players and how when, 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 when we went up uh, from nas- National 2 to National 1, you had Harvey, Harvey Young at uh, 10, uh, and he was at times mercurial, could do something magical. Have we got somebody magical within Canterbury now who might be able to do that for us? Absolutely. I, I think... Um, We've got a very exciting back line, and it's, it's one of the most exciting back lines we've had. I, I think Frank Reynolds at 10 just keeps growing and growing. Um, having Charlie King from the back at 15 has just been amazing. Well, it's 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 on, on, on and off the pitch, yeah. Yeah. You, you just can tell me all about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he, he's just a fantastic guy to have in the group. And like, yeah. Having someone back at the Borneo Club is, is always great. Yeah. It, it's just really good for me. Just to see that. But Tommy Best as well, 
I don't want to call him the old dog, but he is almost the old uh, dog. We, I think we already have. And, uh, I think we've already mentioned. Old, I, I think he's like Benjamin Button. He's going backwards. <laughs> but, um, he, yeah, his game against Bishop Stortford was one of the best I've seen him play. And just like a fine wine, yeah. getting better and better. Well, chaps, I'm going to say adieu. Yeah, go and towel. enjoy, go and enjoy. Cheers, Cork, thank you. See you. Without Corks, we've actually got some running in the second row today, so it'll be exciting, to, <laughs> exciting to see some movement <laughs> That's out very, there. very, very true. I mean, no, it's always great to get a bit of insight from Corks, of first-team coach, if you guys don't, not, don't know, ex-player, then became coach. So it's always interesting to see the insight of someone who sees the boys every day. And uh, Corker was a player back in 2019, 2020, when Kingsman, superb, and when we were talking about that time we were in that one, Corker wasn't even on the coaching, well, he was coach yeah, yeah but but he was but now he's graduated up to full first team director of rugby and so, i mean doesn't that just doesn't that just show the progression which we were talking about we want from the young it's still there when you finish playing here so. yeah no no agree it's, it's amazing it's, it's always good to get the insight from someone who <laughs> he's up here every tuesday every thursday with, with the boys training so f like for me obviously i don't you don't see this progression through the players through the ranks over the years but it's amazing it's, it's always exciting to see one on days like this what we're gonna go yeah, so anyway, let's uh, let's crack to it. So Canterbury we're going to kick off going down the hill first half. Do you think they're actually going to use the slope well this time? Well, so traditionally I always say the slope is worth about 14 points. That's what, to me, that's what I think the slope's worth. Today, today we've got a really calm evening, so I'm not sure it's going to be worth quite that, but it's going to be it's going to be going to be intense. So it's a really good start from Canterbury. Um, yeah, I mean the defensive line set quite nicely there, isn't it? Again, it's just on. I'm going to be, I'm, I've said it already, I'm going to be wary around about the edge of the ruck. Can we make sure we have the guards in place? Still Weston Park ball there. Right. So Weston Park playing up the hill here. It's, it's difficult, difficult to get out of the, here at Canterbury. But when you're going up the hill, it's, it's a long way up. <laughs> the thing is, I think when you're, a, when, you, when you're around about the, the park, you don't seem to notice that slope so much. But when you do get up the top here, it, it's formidable. Yeah, and then so Canterbury kicked the ball back. Westcombe Park on the check. We're roughly where we started yeah, for yeah. from the first kick yeah. out here. Westcombe Park, to me, looked like they're over perhaps committing at the ruck. They're very wary of Canterbury's tight five, which mm. which which is which is some big bruises up there. Yeah, they certainly are. I mean, I think the inclusion of Dave Irvine in particular at Canterbury is going to be huge. I mean, that guy is an absolute unit. And then we've thrown Jamie Stevens, captain here, uh, for the first team, thrown him into the second row as well. As well so it's not. <laughs> You're kind of packing it's the pounds on in that tight five. Yeah, you certainly are. I mean, you know, uh, Can you hear the not, not, not rowing away there. Uh, again, this was something which was quite hot, actually, at Stormford. The referee was rolling away. And obviously the jack in particular, he had real issues. I, I, I agree. I know. I tell you what, that we, I thought we didn't get pinned off any, but the jack was really tight this year many head and neck injuries are coming into rugby and obviously we're seeing in the press Steve Thompson and so yeah. many other ex-pros bringing it to light so the RFU and the referees union in particular have got to be really really hot on this whole when you jackal for those those you don't play rugby or whatever mm. you've got to you two feet on the ground you've got to get over the ball you're leaning forward so you're, you're exposing the back of your head and your neck you're leaning over like a like a bridge almost. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's a lot of exposure to get really to get really really hurt in there. I think part of the problem there is as well. Once that neck's exposed, people are always trying to um, you know they're always trying to roll you. And hence why the roll was taken out as well. But these are, yeah. So Canterbury, will, we've got to come mm. around the corner real quick here. In nicely, Western Park. To be honest with you. Yeah. Quick ball from the base. Going through the hands, hands are good. He's cut inside the winger there. That's, uh, I think, a taking the ball up. No. Loose pass from the nine. Can't we got a bit of advantage here? So what can we do for it? We're going to here. We go. Let's play it. Play wine Tommy quick. Best kicks long. It's not not ah, the best the kick in the world. The not ball. the best kick in the world. That, but considering. See, this is one, in the last two years, one thing that's changed massively is the 50-22 yes. in the rugby union. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I play for the fourth team, okay? And when we're playing here, when we're on a pitch this size, like this, and when you're on the counter-attack, this, pi this pitch is nice and wide. You can find those corners easily. Yeah. And I'm sorry, that, was a bit, that wasn't a great kick from Tommy <laughs> Best. With no one at home in there, you've got, to, you've got to be finding those corners. Oh, yes, most definitely. I mean, yeah, when you kick like that, you need to be cooking as close as you can down to the corner. I mean, you then apply the pressure back the other way. 
Um, there was an opportunity maybe to have even gone through the hands and gone by themselves. So One at the back there. It's Canterbury have got to really push the line here in defence. Oh, Westcombe Park. Yeah, Once or twice here, Westcombe Park are getting it through hands. Really tr pushing the Canterbury defence, but they haven't been quite executing on that last phase or two. Yeah, it's just trying to get that last pass to stick, isn't it, you know? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, the 11 again was in very good, very good space. Um, but they look, they look like they want to play and play wide. So it's Nathan Morris now taking the uh, line out for the Canterbury. Nicely set up there. It's better than and what we saw in the Yeah, I, I, we were saying pre-match before we came on there, the Canterbury had struggled with the drive a little bit, the catch and drive from the lineup, But they really look like they've got it going. Tom Williams has gone for something exciting there. But yeah, interesting. Sometimes, sometimes you need to know the areas to play. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I, d I love Tom Williams. And I don't think that that was quite the area to play. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he was putting, I think he was putting, uh, well, in, in uh, a unless, serious trouble. Unless, unless he'd already heard the penalty advantage that we didn't hear. Didn't hear that myself. Yeah. I'm not going to Conservative kick. Conservative kick from, from Frankie there. Do you, do you know what? I said it before the game. I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm a broken record here. But, but I think you have to be a better kicker than that at 10. I, I'm, I'm going I'm to sit on the fence. I, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, it's his first kick out of hand. So that was his range finder. I think that's a nice way of putting it. Agreed. That's, that's, that's it. So Harvey, Harvey, a bit high into the contact there. Got turn, did get turnover. Got pushed back a little bit. Young Harvey Ferno, big, big step up for him tonight. Yeah, I really, really hope he goes well. So can, can we going through the hands through nicely? The hands. That Jesse out there out wide. Yeah, I think pushing it is Jesse wide. On that so Jesse, the du Dutch international, got a few games for Holland over the summer. He did, yeah. Now I heard he's the kicker for Holland as well. So that's <laughs> that a is a, that's that's a second row kicker. That is a, that is a, yeah, so I, I I kick for the freeze and I play in, in the back row as well. But okay. but then that's not a national side. So <laughs> so it's, it's it's a bit disconcerting the whole of the Netherlands are what are relying <laughs> Of relying, the second row. of relying on their toe punting second row to kick. Well, I think he'd be upset if he, if he heard the phrase toe punting. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, you know what? They Do you know what? I tell you what, Canterbury have been screaming out for a good goal kicker off the off the tee recently. Just so you're, what you're saying, give it a go. I'm saying I'm, I'm saying it can't be worse. Well, no, no that's true. To be honest, I, I will say this: that, you know, it, there is something which definitely can be, and that may well explain why last year. We were losing so many games by eight or ten points. You know, getting a decent kicker in. So if you do score four tries, you, you actually convert the four. We were probably converting between one or two. I tell you, what is a big difference as well um, is the confidence of just going to your ten and going, put that in the corner. When you're on the back foot, when you're in your 22, when you're, you've done a few phases and you're not going anywhere. The, just going ten, give us some yards, we'll, we'll, go, we'll give them the ball, yeah. but we'll defend territory. And that's that's a bit that's a big thing in, in rugby. You see it in international yes, rugby so you much. Do, you do, you international do. when you watch the Six Nations or when you watch the Autumn Internationals or when you, whatever if you you're watching at home, you see the kicking game implemented so so often. Yeah, you certainly do. I mean, some people will find that quite boring as well, won't they? At times. I mean, you, again, it's it's not just about these up and up. It's actually about trying to apply pressure in the right areas. Yeah, no, make, no. Make, make the other team make a mistake. I'm, I'm, not talking, I'm not saying it's the most pretty rugby, but also, if you're not defending in your own 22, you're probably not going to concede tries. <laughs> and that's, that, that's the point, isn't it? It's like, no, let's, most let's, definitely. let's get it out of the danger zone sometimes. Well, look, you know, you're not going to play against a team like Harlequins, are you, each week? Where if you do put it in their in their 22, you think that they will attack you and go. Yeah, through. yeah, no, exactly. Um, there's, there's, there's teams that are going to attack you from all so all areas of the park, but that's Harlequins. You know, yeah. what, they're, they're, this they're isn't quite the same. They're, thing, they're not there. playing in that two east or east, uh, west or west, north east, or south. south yep. yeah. So here we go. So Westcombe Park have set quite nicely, probably about 30 yards out here. Haven't been able to shift it. So again, going through the hands there. Good, good yes. counter, counter attack in there from Canterbury to give some really kill the the sting of the attack. Well, it was better. Than actually, Canterbury now getting out of those rucks. We're getting the line set again here. 
obviously, hopefully, learning from the first two, the, the two penalties already given against them. You can hear the kill call from Canterbury there. So, the kill call for anyone who's not quite sure is the whole line is going to get up like an American football blitz almost. Yeah. Really get up, get up in the defence. You see, Weston Park are still working through the phases here. Uh, although the defensive hand is, generally speaking, staying strong, but that's now, I think, the fourth penalty at the muck. Yeah, and they're, they're racking up. The ref The ref is g going to have to have a word with Jamie and the boys in the minute for Canterbury because, you know what, you can't get away with that all day. No, you can't. And, and it, looks, and it looks like they're going to have a kick a goal here. He seems like he's set himself for it. The, uh, the ARs haven't gone round just yet. No, they're going to go for the long? No, no, yet. Brave call, or would you start building a score? Do you know what? It's pre-season. For, for, for me, points and the result don't matter as much as the whole process. Yeah. So, so in, in essence, going going through the lines, going 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 uh, through yeah, what yeah. you've got I, set. I, you, I, I would rather, I might be wrong, I, but I would rather practice my attacking more from 10 yards out than let my, let, let my 10 have a kick at the post. Yeah, no, no. And that's probably me being the prag pragmatist that I always have been. Um, but uh, again, I always like to build a score and then play. But again, you're, you're absolutely right. There's nothing to be won here. It's not about getting points today, having five points for a win, and, and, and you know, with your bonus. So, Cantry have done really well here from the mall. So, what you want to do is when you get your mall set, you want to kind of, when the ball lands, you want to get all of your boys twisting their hips almost at 45 degrees, and mm. you want to be driving, wherever you're catching the ball, you want to be driving, twisting in and driving towards the post. Yeah. Cantry did very well there in that they twisted them all and they got them driving back out towards the touchline, which made Westcombe Park then want to have to get the ball out as quickly as possible and use it. Yeah. I mean, with that in particular, I mean, obviously, yeah, as you said, you, you played back, kind of back row there. It's, it's surely there's a level of, uh, of you know, it's, it's speed, isn't it? The moment you get that player down, it's about getting, that, getting yourself set really quick to get the drive through, right? Yeah, no, completely. You want to be, you, especially when you're in your train two, you don't compete so much. As, as you probably know, like mm. you're not going to be jumping as high or as competitively as, you, as if you're at the halfway line because you're you're conscious you need to defend. Yeah. So as soon as that, as soon as the jumper first hits the deck, you're driving straight through them, putting them off guard. Canterbury did it very well there. Um, Westcombe Park ro rode the wave pretty well. Um, I'm not sure what the ref was blown up here for, but I'm not sure if it's an injury or, or a penalty. But it looks like it's going to be another penalty to Westcombe Park. It, yeah, it does look like. I mean, he's he's stalking around. The country players now, and he's just pulled Jamie over, um, and he is giving him a talking to. So this this is a really good set of phases here from Western Park, mm. team who are uh, division below. Yep, um, have really come up here on the front foot up the hill, and we st we started the conversation at the start of this half saying I thought the hill was worth 14 points, yada yada yada. Yet here we are, Western Park on the front foot. This whole time in, yeah. The score is the score is still nil nil for anyone just joining us, but Westcombe Park really have had the the real run of the play so far. No, they really have. I mean, uh, Canterbury actually haven't had really had the ball in any uh, to, to attack with at all. The moment we did actually turn over in our 22, we tried to nudge it out, didn't quite work. Um, but Westcombe Park, to be honest, have set themselves really well, and I really like the way in which they're trying to fire the ball out wide. Yeah, they. Anyone joining us just now, they've missed out the Westcombe Park. They were really getting the, the ball going through the hands. A couple of times, they've just missed that killer instinct on the last pass. Yeah. But but they've done pretty well so far. Yeah, they certainly have. And to be honest with you... But on, so Westcombe Park, not, the throw's not straight there. No, not straight at all. Uh, I mean, I... I, I can't, think can't we go away with that? I was going to say, that's a let-off. Yeah, you don't, you're, not gonna get, you're not going to get that every day in that two. No, no, certainly not. And I think the teams that we will come against, especially you know, the likes of Blackheath in particular, um, always known for a very good set piece. Uh, you're not going to get that lucky. I'll tell you what, Canterbury, who are coached by head coach Matt Corker now, former type five, um, played London Welsh, was it? Uh, London, uh, uh, and I believe, if I'm correct, I believe he was at Wasps. Yeah, and, well. and was, I think he was line-out coach at London Welsh as well. So that is going to be one area where he expects his boys to be exceptionally tight. So it'll be interesting to see how Cantu really get that unfolded during the season because traditionally set pieces for Canterbury have been quite a strength. 
Yeah, they have. And I, it was very interesting, I think, when we went up into National 1 in particular, uh, that I think one of our first tries was actually from the driving mall. And that's something which you wouldn't have expected because in first and, I mean, and many we didn't score we didn't score many I didn't think that were outside two phases really <laughs> no no compared to what we were doing in National Two South everything in National Two South was going out wide and really expressing yourself on the rugby pitch but you move up to those levels and sometimes you you go with the you go with the gut instinct and you go with the idea we change how we're going to play and we're going to hope that that will pay off yeah no so it's exciting to see what's up. Early, early whistle from the ref here. It looked like an early push to me, mm. but what did you see? Well, to be honest, I think you're exactly right. Well, like, what's interesting there, though, is that he's actually just called him back for a reset. Now, I would have expected uh, the referee, in particular, Neil Sweeney. Now, Neil, Neil Sweeney's referee here. He's an ex-Isha player, ex-hooker for Isha. Um, and it's interesting that he's called that because I can tell you now for a fact he would have been calling for a full penalty <laughs> if it was against him in that scenario. So, so you, you had a few years at Isha, I, so you I might, six, so was, yes. Neil, was Neil there when you were kicking Neil, about Neil, there? Neil the Norse um, was one of the phrases used. <laughs> um, but you know what, he, 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 he's, uh, he's always spoken well. Um, he's so always plenty of Ice Canterbury here. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No. Carry on, carry on with Neil the Norse. Everyone wants to hear. <laughs> well, yeah, Neil the Norse, bless him. So yeah, uh, six years being his team manager. Um, Six years of never knowing if he was joking or not joking or smiling or happy. Um, very deadpan. Um, but he did have a fantastic knowledge of the game, and in particular for our laws. Of the so game. I guess that makes that the deadpan makes him the perfect asset for a ref. Oh. Again, so, so fr from the penalty there, he should, were aiming to actually get a range finder there, but uh, unfortunately for us, Frank Reynolds dropped it short. But we have responded quite well. Yeah, Canterbury were cracking double tackle there to really counter the uh, the uh, counter attack. Yeah, um, and really stifle the play. But again, frustrating though that we haven't found touch there because we need to start building up our own our own. And these level these players. are you can you at this level at preseason you can almost forgive in like mistakes going through the hands mm. that Western Park had earlier. You're finding your feet. You're getting your, you're getting your Turn mojo. Over. Turn over here from Harry. But you cannot, al you cannot always forgive individual mistakes like that. No, you really can't. But lucky enough, we've got to, we were speaking about Harvey earlier. Uh, great turnover there from himself. Yeah, and can can here we go. On Forward pass, it looks to me. Yeah, yes. and the ref, give, the ref has given it. But yeah, so... Can't so glasses on as well. <laughs> yeah, so going back, going back to what we were saying before about Harvey and kicking and... Mm. And whatever. So, so before I interrupted you with yeah, the full good. pass, carry on, carry on. Yeah. So no, it was a really great turnover. And the fact is, obviously, we didn't find we didn't find touch. Western Park started going through the phases again. But when the player was held up and he then went to the ground, Harvey jackled in perfectly, really quickly, ripped the ball away, and then we had an opportunity to, to attack. Unfortunately, as we've come out wide, obviously the ball's gone forward from the forward pass. But there are signs, signs that we might now start be start getting a little bit more ball. I, I tell you what. When I when I played with Harvey a couple of times last year, he is he really is like a ferret off a drain pipe. When that ball's on the floor, he is all over it. And as as a, a year ago, he hadn't quite filled out. He's still growing as a lad. He's still a young lad. He's still going to get bigger. But a couple, last year, he was getting smashed off the ball by some bigger guys. Cause we were playing at a lower level than this, and ob obviously because I was playing. Um, but so some of the guys weren't quite as technical, so they were just going to sit on him and, and bash him off the ball. But I tell you what, his tenacity and his work rate in and around the fringes, unbelievable. And he's he's just going to do it for 80 minutes. He's he's got an engine on him. He's a young lad, and all he wants to do is be the the second person at the breakdown and get his hands all over that ball. That's what he that's what he loves. Running with the ball, great. He doesn't mind that. Getting over the ball and turning it over, that is what he loves. So what we're saying is, is that we, you know, we're, we're technically saying he is the perfect jackler in the fact that he's, 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 he's always going to be on the shoulder of the tackler. And he's going to wait for that tackle to happen, get the tackler, goes away. He's straight in there. Yeah, I tell you what, who's the chap from Wasp um, that's done his knee in recent? Uh, he played for England a little bit. Um, is it Willis? Possibly. But yeah. so he's any Wasp player, I, I, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm a little older than you, James. But I'm thinking about a player called Tom Rees. 
yeah. was playing for Wasp and he was superb. Yeah, yeah. So what, what you'll notice Harvey does here, here is that he'll get involved slightly with the tackle, but he'll, he'll push the guy to the ground, arms up in the air, and he'll be away. And then so immediately, arms up in the air, he's not involved in the tackle. So he can get hands on the ball. He's a separate player. He's not involved in the tackle. And then that's what the jackal is. You have to, yeah. There has to be a clear separation between the tackler and then the jackaler. Yeah. But here, so can we are actually going to get some ball here? We're going to go through a few phases. Could be a penalty coming. Yeah, yeah not yeah, rolling yeah. away. So Always a tough call. Not rowing, not rowing away for me, James. Because sometimes you, could, you, you you actually are getting penned in by the player. See, see, I I agree and I disagree in equal measure because the art of the tackle is you have to tackle on the right side and you have you have to be there to be able to roll away so if your head and your body is on the wrong side great you've made the tackle but you, your body isn't in the right position as a as a child you're always taught like a uh, cheek to cheek yes eyes eyes yeah. eyes on the thighs yeah and if and if you're going high or if your head's the wrong side so if you're getting your arm the wrong side then you're in trouble and then, and that's what happens here in these not rolling ways. Equally, there's sometimes you do get pinned in as well, which you can't help that. Uh, I mean, I, I always, I always get frustrated with it because I mean, when I used to play, and it was a long, long time ago now, is there was nothing wrong with the darn good shoeing. Uh, so if you were the wrong now, side, now you, we you, are you, going you, back quite a few were, years. You were, you were dealt with in a very different way. Um, so, so in actual fact, you didn't mind so much actually taking a shoeing for your team. Uh, whereas nowadays it is literally penalty straight away. So here we go. So Elliot with a decent clear out here. And can we get the penalty just Again, not rolling away. Just in front of the post. What are we? Ten meters inside Westcombe Park's half. This is the real first time that we've seen Canterbury stringing a little bit of pressure together. Yeah, and to be honest, as he went into attack, I think it was I think it's Jamie down there who took the ball in. He's I mean, made a glass, but he'll be back. He'll be he back. Is, yeah, but he was. <laughs> one of, one of the but it, it was a huge collision. He went in high, so the other player. Um, possibly then, obviously, made the play and not want to roll away a bit because he was lying there going, crikey. Yeah. Don't fancy yeah. that again. One of uh, one of Jamie's first seasons for the ones, quite a few moons ago now. I remember he um, he was on the far side of the pitch, down by the bottom flood, like there in the corner, and he took quite a shot to the ribs, and he was on the floor crying, and uh, I was having a beer with his dad at the time and his mum was there and uh, Kev Kev Stevens uh, Jamie's dad was like, oh no 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 he'll be all fine he's he just made a glass wow and so, uh, and, so and, and so when your dad says that uh, to be fair Jamie got back up he carried on the game and he still he had a great game but when your dad says that about you you kind of you, you have to know yeah. I, th yeah, I think you do I, and you know what uh, I'm, I'm sure he's not gonna be overly impressed with knowing about this conversation uh, I do understand that. I have two boys. One of my boys is, I feel, made of glass. Uh, <laughs> whereas the other one can get, can, w w you know, we'll, we'll run for a brick wall, but will be felled by a cold. Yes. So you did, you did get them like that. So this is an interesting position for Canterbury because we're 10 metres inside Westcombe Park's half. Okay. And we're bang slap almost middle in front of the post. We've been talking a lot about Canterbury's kicking. You are here in one of the most trickiest positions on the park because... Wherever you go, either side is a long way to the touchline. So, with with someone who isn't a great kicker, what do you do? Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, I, well, I, say, saying that he slotted one in the corner. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's commentators' curse, be the other way around. I think that there, there is that question, and then you see it a lot of times, even in Premiership and international. They will naturally then go to their. Not more often, not it's normally the inside centre, who seems to have a larger boot. Um, and they kind of go, you know what, we want these range finders, we, we will use you for them rather than anyone else. Yeah, no, completely agree. It's just one of those situations where down the hill, that should be a nailed on, we're going in the corner, we're going to drive in more. But when you're not certain, and then all of us, because from there, Canterbury should be going, this is going to be a five-pointer at least, because you're in the middle of the park, we're going to put you in the corner, we're going to go left, we're going to go right, doesn't really matter because we're going down the hill. And we're gonna get, we're gonna set our mall because we're confident with our type five. We're gonna get it. We're gonna come in and we're gonna drive you. Mm. However, now we've got a Westcombe Park scrum. 
<laughs> on the on the 22. Yeah, and I mean it's a real shame because you've just made that love. He's, he's actually made touch really well there, and then they've gone then they've gone for a trick line out, a quick throw to the front, which wasn't straight. And this is what you then get. So again, you're turning the ball over again. This is when you need to continue to go through the phases, apply the pressure. It's there's something to be said about having having old heads on the pitch, isn't there? In certain like in certain positions, you want someone to go. Like, come on, boys, don't be stupid. We're going to do this. this we're going to slow it down, and we're going to do what we do well. And I think that's, that's the, again, you're, you're hoping that the players such as who are in there, so Jamie, you know, you know and uh, Dave Irvine in particular. Good. Sorry to interrupt, but cracking ta counter rocking from Danny and Jamie and uh, Jesse in there. So, Cantry have got the ball back on the offensive front. Loose pass, but... Ball back. But we've got the advantage. Yeah, I'm not so sure what holding was on. What, holding Ruffy's on on the floor, was it? On, yep, yeah. holding on. I mean, this is this is a wonderful opportunity. Now, can you play quick? There is a See, I tell you, so we're going for the scrum here. It looks like, is it? But I tell you what, I love watching when you watch teams like X to play. Quins have done it in recent years as well. Oh, we're going for the corner. Yep. Put the ball on the floor, tap it, and give it to the fat lad. Well, you know what? They, <laughs> if, if, if we look at the Premiership final from so last year, Ellis Genge, mm -hmm. five meters out. Went for, the yeah, went for the tap, didn't he? Went for that. He came at yard short, but then they then attacked that blind side. They were expecting him to come back inside towards the post, but they snuck around the other side. But what is going to be interesting to see, we haven't seen it yet from Canterbury. We haven't seen the back line in action. We haven't seen hand ball in hand. We haven't seen uh, Guy Hilton on the wing, well, who's Hilton. got a lot of pace. And he's set really wide here. There's a huge space out there. <laughs> And unfortunately, it's turned over. I mean, you can hear West Compile very happy with themselves there. Well, understandably, they're defending on their five meter against a, t a team in the league above in Canterbury who wants to be pushing to the top of the table in that two. And they're just not executing. No, no not at all. And I think that's a real, real shame. And, and again, you know, similar to how West Camp Park let us off when they were up in R22 right at the beginning of the half, same scenario. Just, just do the basics. I mean, I remember you know, I've been up, up, up in, in the tower with Corks a few times. One of their phrases there is "earn the right, earn the right to play." And the problem is, they're not earning it yet. No. So we're we're the best part of 25, 26 minutes in. The score, the score on well, so very surprisingly, is nil nil. And I don't think any t either team, any team, there's only two of them here, but either team has really earned the right to play. Neither of them have put. Put their foot, put their stomp on the game today, and given it to their back, have really all, all showed a continuous passage of play of what they're really about. I think Wiscombe Park probably have done it slightly more than, than than Canterbury, but perhaps in the first five ten minutes for sure. But since then, it's become very bitty. We've got you know penalties after penalties. We've got loose kicks. There hasn't been much flow to the game, and hopefully it will change now. Loose kick from Western Park there. Frankie and that's, uh, picked that's it up Charlie beautifully. Out, it? And then Char dropped off to Charlie just inside Western Park's halfway line. Canterbury getting set. Quite a slow ball, though. Yeah, well, in Tom Williams' defence, Tom Williams at nine for Canterbury today. Canterbury were very slow at getting they back and getting, getting set, slow. They were getting set, were they? No. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a hill to come up, but it's not, it's not bloody Mount Everest. No. Tommy Best doing what he loves so to do. And Tommy Best getting hard, held up here. Held up. No, he's got away, with it. got away with it. Ball's recycled. Now, Brick, he's a great... I, I really enjoy watching Brick, which is... Uh, Tyler Roberts. That's what we call him. Um, but he does give you yards. He... He's a smash-mouth kind of rugby player, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's an exciting guy because he gets around the park a lot. He's, he, he's got an engine on him. But if you give that ball to him, he's, he's putting up his jumper and he's just running at you. Yeah, uh, he, it's rare that you're going to find him giving you an offload. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for the want of skill. It's just he's, <laughs> gonna, he's just going to run bloody hard at you. Yeah. It's, yeah, it must be a Welsh thing. Yes, yes. So Canary have gone, gone for the corner again. Decent kick this time. But he seems to be happy. He seems to be happier now. Maybe, as we said, that first kick was just a, t a, a range finder. Yeah, well, let's hope so for the rest of Canterbury season. Yeah. But... So, okay, you are Canterbury's line-out coordinator. What are you calling here? Oh, what am I going to call here? To be honest with you, I would call something slow. I'd actually go to the back of the back pod. They've only gone for a five pod, so chances I will be middle. But if I would have gone for a full line-out, gone to the back, 
um, purely just to open up the open up the pitch. A bit we more. we were lucky enough to see Canterbury warming up their lineup just in front of us here, just before kickoff. And they were hitting the back pod quite nicely mm. with Harvey Ferno at the back. He's only a whippet, and they were throwing him up in the air. So if you're if you're quick enough to get him up and get people around him, you're already 15 yards in, and you've got a good push on there. Well, it certainly will help Canterbury because over the last couple of years, I've only really ever had two actual jumpers. Having a, a, a lighter player, especially a nice light a light flanker, does give you that third option. Yeah, Canterbury traditionally have had back row players filling in at. Filling in in and around, and they haven't really f done too well. But as we say, as we say, go to the back there. The, the throw wasn't great, too long, not pretty. No. And and here we go. So we're going to go back for another scrum down for Westcombe Park. Canterbury had the advantage, and have thrown it away. It appears to be the way in which the game's going. To be honest with you, so far, neither team is actually literally wanting to win the game. They're actually allowing the, uh, the opponent to try and to actually you know, get the win from them. Um, there, there, there's something to be said about it being pre-season. Yes, that's true. That's true. But this is a lovely track. You know, there's no rain out here. There's hard. There's for, very strangely enough for Canterbury in particular, no wind up here. Yeah. So for people who, who don't come up to the Merton Merton Lane ground very often or Marine Travel ground, sorry, as it as it is actually known. We can't just beyond where you can see on the far ground, I'm not sure what pitch you're looking at at the moment, but just beyond the hedgerow is a long, long ro lo road of fields. And the wind does travel across those fields all the way up the hill towards, towards the rugby pitch. So we, do, we can get quite a swirl up here on a, on, on a, on a good day. But tonight, it is it's absolutely like a mill pond. There's, there's, no, there's, there's, there's not a breath of air out here. No, 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 no and we're, we're probably using up most of it, to be honest with you. So Canterbury have done very, very well here on the on the scrum. So real good counter charge. It looks like Danny Harriet led the charge there, and we turned the scrum over. Yeah, and I think what we need to now do is again just push this further forward. I mean, for me, I would I, I would probably go for another scrum um, just to now apply the pressure. You've now just pushed them off. Go again. Um, it's it's a level of having that you have to front up, don't you? Are we going for another scrum here? Before we, just before we reset. You've seen a lot more rugby at this level than I have, okay? So, how how has Danny won that scrum, that counter scrum? Well, to be honest with you, from there, I mean, he's literally for a change, he's actually got his hips right. Danny tends to have his hips a little bit too high for my liking. Um, but what he's done is he's actually applied the pressure on the loose head, so in between the loose head and the hooker himself. People would used to call that boring in, but it's not too bad because he actually just changes angle very slightly. Once you get that and you start to get that push in between the hooker, their pressure on that hooker's neck is intense. Uh, and he's been able to actually shove them off the ball. So Canterbury have got penalty advantage here. Tom Williams spins it out wide to Frankie Morgan. Frankie Morgan. Who absolutely plowed, plowed into his opposition man. And he's been put out into touch. So, but we're going to we're going to come back for the penalty advantage Canterbury here. Well. I'm going to say the Westcombe Park defender's done well. Then. Yeah, I mean, he's a very I big lad coming at you. Frankie Morgan is a big boy, isn't he? He's. I saw him earlier coming out to warm up, and he looks a lot, um, sl not slimmer, but he looks a lot more leaner mm. than I've seen him in a, in a couple of seasons, Frankie. Yeah, certainly. I mean, he did have a few injury. He did have a few injury problems over the last couple of seasons, but. He is a very big lad. I remember first seeing him here, and I and I was surprised. And I thought we had a second row on the wing. Yeah, so Almost I played like a Matt Banahan kind of. Scenario. I played a couple of years ago. I was playing. I was filling in for the twos when they were short, and Frankie was playing in twelve there. And uh, when we were warming up, he, um, I thought we were. I was playing back row that day, and I thought, oh crikey, we're going to run through the drills here. And I was like, oh, are you in the second row? Are you, mate? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm at twelve. Wow, I, yeah. do, I do not want to be your opposite 12. No, no, absolutely not. Let's hope we can get him the ball because he's quick. He is very strong. Yeah, it certainly is. There's another reset here at the scrum. Again, as, as I did mention around about Neil, Neil Sweeney, the referee, you know, he, again, ex-hooker, Marisha, um, and uh, he, hopefully he knows what's going on in that front row because uh, you know, I really hate that terminology people going on about the dark arts of the front row. There's no real dark arts in it, really. It's either you drive straight or you drive crooked. Yeah, no, no, basically. And that's and also, one of the real big things that they're, they're calling up on these days is the early drive. Mm. Because we got to be really secure in the scrum because we don't want people getting whacked on the heads. It's not the, it's not the days of the 90s where we're starting a, a foot away and we're driving into each other and, and giving each other brain damage. It has to be a really secure scrum. 
Yeah, it certainly does. And I think once it is secure, you, get, you can get these wonderful contests where you just see the ball staying there and both packs are not giving an inch. So Tom That's Williams really has great, picked great it up from the base here, give it to Tommy Best. Country, for the first time in a while, really, really probing Western Park just under their post. Again, my only concern here is that the, the, the Canterbury, we're not setting ourselves quickly enough to give Tom quick ball. So if you look here on the right-hand side of the play, if you, we're going to the clubhouse side of the pitch here. There's no real line outside of Jesse with the number six no, jersey and on. I mean, you know, Charlie king sitting really deep. But uh, again, if they can get the ball through to him, and if he gets on the charge, he times his run. Yeah. Pretty unstoppable from there, wouldn't you say? Well, you, you would like to think so. And then we've got Hilton out here touching the touchline as well. But are we going to get the ball out here? A couple quick steps from Canterbury there. Charlie's had to step in and help clear the rock out. Then we're going to go for it. And then we're going to go from, we're going to go right to left. Dropped in the contact. Again, very frustrating. One thing I have to say is that Canterbury, despite cracking pitch position, they just didn't didn't ever look like they wanted to score like when you when when you when you're in the ascendancy you have people steaming on to a flat line ball you've got people your 10 put their hands up in there you've got your 12 you've got your 13 channel people are there they're set for me i'm looking at that right now nobody wanted to be there to be honest it, it did see yeah i mean nobody wanted to be there. i think you're absolutely right it's kind of like when you're a bloke and you get dragged along to a Michael Bublé concert, you don't want to be there either. But the issue here is, is that, you know, as you're saying, you're five yards away. You should be screaming for that ball. If you're five yards away and you're a prop, you want that ball because you can just rumble over. Completely. And we, we I didn't, unless, unless I wasn't looking, I didn't see anybody doing that. You want, you want Danny, you want, well, even your number eight, you want Brick. In fact, I'd be happy to have either of my second rows getting the ball in on a, on a tight line and screaming for it. What we didn't see was anything, and then more, d more worrying than that, we didn't see the back, back line set up in any sort of attacking phase play to go, give your Tom Williams at 10, there's two options, okay? So you're down here with the ball, you, you've got the ball at the base of the ruck, you're looking up, you've got either some big lad coming screaming in on the short line that you're going to give the ball to, which is what you want five yards out. You really want some big guy screaming, screaming as quickly as they can go. Failing that, you're going to go deep. You're going to go out to your 10. But for what do you do if, if neither of them are available? Well, neither were set, were they? And I think this is part of the problem at the moment is that Tom's getting slow. We, we, we're not saying that he's getting slow ball, but we're saying that the ball is slow coming off the, off the base of the ruck. And part of the problem is, is exactly what you're saying. I saw there the ball did come out to Danny Herrick, but Danny Herrick was too deep and static. Why on earth are you static? You know, you want to be looking at, as you're saying, you're looking at, you're calling for it. You want it to be whipped in at your bread basket, get your hands on that ball and just trundle over. I've, I've played enough rugby with Tom Williams. I've played touch with him this, this summer. I've, he's played for the fours with me a couple of years ago. I know that if I'm running a tight line, Tom Williams is going to put it in my bread basket and I'm going to just trundle. If I get turned, if, if, if I get hit high and I get hit short and you get pushed back, that's a different matter. That is a very different matter. But you've got to, you've got to really be getting in there and, and giving it a go. Yeah, I mean, I thought... <laughs> I would suggest that there, 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 there's two options there, isn't there? I mean, would you prefer would you prefer to be to be, to to lose ball in terms of the fact that you've passed it out, you're, you're static, you've not moved, you've knocked it on, or would you prefer the knock on, which is coming from a player trying to be progressive, running onto that hard line and knocking it forward as the balls come into him? So, captain of the fourth team here, very different kettle of fish coming mm. from me. I never have a problem with someone trying something. Yeah. You, if we're going to knock the ball on, if we're going to drop the ball, but we're go, we're trying something and we're going, f we're on the front foot. Tell you what, hands up in the air. I do not care about that. Yep. What I have a real problem with is what I've just seen there. Yeah. Just That's nobody right. offering. That's. And I, I'm hoping that when uh, half time Corks will say something like that, saying, you know, boys, you know, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Fine. sorry oh, to interrupt. Wow. Decent exit from Westcombe Park there. Yeah. Decent, decent kick. Push Cantu back slightly, but yeah, but yeah agreed, agreed. We're, it's going to take someone at half time to go, guys. Do you want to? Do you want to be out here? Like, are you going through the motions? Like, well, we've been camped down in there in their half now, haven't we? Down at the bottom of the slope now for maybe maybe well, ten minutes without a score. And Guy Guy Hilton's walking towards us here in number fourteen. I don't even think he's touched the ball. 
he got near it at one point, if you can remember from the little, the little chip and chase through. Yeah. I mean, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, so Kandri, a decent posi position on the pitch here. Danny, a little pick and drive. So Getting a bit of a mess at the, mess at the breakdown there. But so here we go. That's so Harvey. Oh, high. a bit high, a bit high, be sir. Called there, surely. So this, this, oh, oh. a bit of a looper. To be honest with you, I think there, Will's done quite well to get himself out of trouble. So Charlie and Guy, Guy linking up pretty well out here on the Let's wing. Let's see if we can start going through the phases here, Tom. This is, yeah, this is what, this is what we really want to see from Canterbury. Is Decent latch there as well onto Brick there. Again, the ball is quicker now. Danny's trundling up like Here Danny we go. always does. So it's taken about 38 minutes. The score is nil-nil. But Canterbury are really now exerting some pressure. Ball in hand. Some fantastic loop round there. Here we go. And he's in. The moment we have actually put, put the ball in the right places and played quick, that's what you get. You go from one, one side of the pitch to the other. I hesitate to suggest that that's the first time Canterbury have put three phases together. I think you're probably right. In fact, in fact, let me change that right. I think I hesitate to suggest that either side has put three phases together. Mm. And what's interesting here is, I mean, they've gone and played, literally, the Canterbury have just gone and played the classic uh, level of rugby. It's the fact that you go from one side of the pitch to the other and the then attack the back again, right? The, the old typewriter for yeah, anyone it, who's, who's, not, who's not, not, not up to the, the rugby speed. So you, what, what you do is you just go from one side, ding, you get to the touchline, you reset and you... You ban the time yeah. right all the way back across and you start again. Yeah. And that's what Canterbury did there. And so what happens is when you're when you're a defence, it's you're looking at the ball all the time. You're all the time you're looking at the ball. And so I'm following the ball all the way to the left hand side of the pitch. I'm following it, I'm following it, I'm following it. Then the ball gets spun all the way back across. All of a sudden I've got to get my, my bloody skates on because I've followed the ball with my eyes and my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, bang. There's always, there's always a big overlap on the other side. Yeah, and I think you're always hoping in that respect as well. You're going to be trying to tire out your big front five. So you want to then get those wonderful opportunities where who you're then coming against is a prop. You want to be facing a prop as a winger, don't you? Yeah, no. So Cantry missed a the kick there. So That's 5-0. Uh, wasn't, wasn't the toughest kick for a right footer? I have to, have no, to admit. <laughs> So I know. Go we, five we, nil up. Could it, 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 sound, it, does it does sound harsh. That, but that was the again. right. That was the side you wanted as a right foot kicker. It's certainly. It's going to be interesting to see here. The kick, the kick return is going to be right in front of us here. And we set was two pods. It's not a third. Yeah, Guy Hilton wants this. I can see it. He's really up for it. He just wants his hands on the ball. I think. So it's a high looper into the night sky. Knocked on from Westcombe Park. So Canterbury's got but the advantage. Will has, Will has got the ball. Decent clearance. This isn't going to touch. This is staying inside. But if they get up as a line, they can apply the pressure. So, so as Kandri a line, boys. Harvey yeah, got a hand on him, slowed him down, and back in. So de decent kick chase from Canterbury. Could so the art of the kick chase. Uh, let's explain it. Let's explain yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Bit. So you don't want to be up like Usain Bolt because explain to me what happens if I run up like Usain Bolt. What, why is that easy? Well, let's be honest, it's very easy. The fact that you then don't, don't have an actual defensive line, you can then find the gap behind. It's almost very similar into, into fact with, with, even with football. When you talk about the offside line for football, it's exactly the same thought process. If that line is not together and not straight, there is the opportunity to attack where it's broken, and that's exactly what the issue could have yeah. been. But what was interesting and heartening for me in particular was Danny Herriot screaming that line up. Don't often see a prop running up that fast. No, well, downhill, downhill. But what what you often hear it referred to at, on the commentary or when you're playing is called a dog leg, isn't it? So that's what it is, where someone streams up super quick. And what you're doing is you're stepping out of line, making a hole in behind you. So that's, that was a great kick chase in country because what they did is you have to go on your slowest man. And that was what Danny was calling, we go as a team, we go as a team. And then as soon as Westcombe Park got the ball, they got to the halfway line and all of a sudden they're in trouble because there's no gap. And now we've got, we've got a scrum down for Canterbury here, just inside the Western Park half, and it's a real chance again for Canterbury to turn the screw and exert a bit more pressure. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, I'm hoping personally they're going to come attack on our side here because at the moment you've got a one-on-one -on -one situation. That ball up, and he did go. We'll so we've, we've gone to the onside here for Canterbury. A lot, hands on ball, Charlie tr throwing out Tranky. Uh, Morgan's got great speed there. The hands have gone well. Again, hard uh, to uh, stop. We, discuss, to stop we discussed there. earlier that Frankie's a big boy. He certainly is there. And it looks like it's been held up yeah, over yeah. the line. So, that, 
So West Ham Park, this this has been interesting change yeah. in the rules over the last two years. A horrible change. So a horrible change, in my opinion. So what used to be a five metre scrum is now a touchline dropout. So that means you have to have a drop drop kick from behind your own post. Now, if you've been watch anyone who's been watching rugby around the world, they would have noticed in South Africa in particular, they've set up quite a system where where the drop goal gets kicked out from, they would throw it into the middle and they've got some amazing drop kickers that would just have a go at the post as a drop drop kick. So from here, Western Park have pinged it out. Now Canterbury attacking them back from their own half and that's a tough place to be. It is a very tough place to be, but you know what, brave. I mean, people do say Fortress played brave. And there is a classic example of the dog leg there, James, what you were just talking about. Tommy noticed that gap as he went as he went to pass. The defenders come shooting out the line, and the gap has opened, and he's capitalised. Yeah, exactly. So, what's happened there is Westcombe Park. They've it's, <laughs> you, you said it immediately. Tough place to be when you're on your goal line dropout. Mm. They've put it up. They haven't chased as a unit. Canterbury have noticed that, capitalised on that, and all of a sudden you're, you're in back in for another try. Ten 0 to Canterbury. And yeah. what what has been a very tough attritional half of rugby it's now turning out to be a 10 nil possibly 12 nil bonus for canterbury when two minutes ago we were talking about matt cork gonna have to take them in at half time and have a word yeah he certainly is and it was interesting because we we spoke to courts before we started saying like about mercurial players and that's a mercurial moment for me you know tom williams he's almost done what danny care would do for harlequins uh, that lovely little snipe um that's a great finish really enjoyed that yeah no it's good to see and so here we go Frankie on the kick and he's got he's got that one he's got that one and we're going and in for half, half and we're going in for half time so that puts Canterbury 12 to nothing up I said I said at the very beginning of the game before there any ball was kicked I said I thought the slope was worth 14 points so let's let's see what happens in the second half now Canterbury 12 nil up yeah yeah it's going to be very interesting to see Say, saying that Western Park are a division below so maybe, maybe maybe the 14 points isn't quite right but I, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, I remember coming here uh, when I was back at Isha. We came here on tour, um, and we saw the slope. We thought, oh, not a problem at all, and we were two, two leagues above Canterbury at that point. But, yeah, that slope that slope kicked our ass in the second half. For anyone who's on the stream, I'm not sure which, which camera you're looking at up here, but I tell you what, when you're out here, we're stood on the 22 of the top half of the pitch. When you're going down, we're probably like one or two foot, the far end, two foot below us. Could be, you know what? Could be even more. To be honest so with you, during during lockdown, when you weren't meant to go, out, I used to come out here and I would kick, I'd kick twenty balls across the pitch. When I, I can kick through those posts down the hill. When I'm coming up the hill, there's not a chance I'm get anywhere near the bloody post, and that's the difference. You don't. It's it's just the slope. Real, really, really does give you such an advantage. Yeah, and I, I think, that, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, James, I, I think you've set yourself up there because I think before the season ends, we now to now need to see if that is the case. Well, have, have you got any size 11s? I'll, we'll get out there right now <laughs> and I'll put one through the post for you. I'll, I'll tell you what. Slot it through nice and easy. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think actually there's some in the office. Get me some size 11s. Uh, <laughs> Damien, who's in charge of the uh, production this evening, if you can get me some size 11s and bring them out on the pitch and a kicking tee. Yeah, a high tee or a low one? I quite like a high tee. I like it floating. Yeah. One, one of the, you know the one, the telescopic ones that you can pull up and oh. down? Yeah, that, yeah that's, my, a treat. that's a little bit of me. But yeah, so it's going to be exciting to see what, what comes out in the second half because Cantor have got a lot to do. Yeah, they certainly do. They certainly do. Um, again, I think the, the, the last five minutes of the half flattered them, perhaps. I think, um, I think perhaps he's understating it. <laughs> no, it's, exciting. it's probably an It's exciting. Yes, it is because exciting. there were periods where Canterbury clicked. Yeah, and certainly. they really got through the gears. And if it Westcom Park in the first half, in the first ten minutes, they were almost clicking, and they could have been ten or fifteen nil up before we'd even before we'd even Canterbury even thought about playing. Yeah. So in one sense, Canterbury were lucky that that didn't happen. And then they're also lucky that they played, they did click, and then they got going at the end. They certainly did get going at the end, and we can only hope that's going to be um, a sign of what's going to happen throughout the second half. But you're absolutely right, Westcom Park. I mean, as you said about the 14 points thing, they've battled there, they've battled all throughout the hill for that, that huge amount of time. Defensive line, generally speaking, was pretty darn good, 
one slight defensive error for the second try. I'm going to be really interested to see how West Ham Park play the second half downhill. I think they're going to be a bit more clever than what perhaps Canterbury bring. I think they will go for the corners. I think they will apply pressure. And I think they'll then try and go through the hands. It'll be interesting to see because we Canterbury have got uh, Frankie Morgan Jr. playing on the left wing today in the number 11 jersey for Canterbury. Hasn't grown up playing all his rugby on the wing. Not naturally a winger. Mm. And so when you're playing downhill here, or when you're playing downhill anywhere, it opens up a lot of kicking. Especially in the last two years when this 50 22s come in. Yep. So for people who aren't quite sure where 50 22, if you kick it from inside your own half, it bounces and goes out in the opposition 22. The line out, instead of being yours for kicking it out, comes back to being, instead of being the opposition's for you kicking it out, sorry, comes back to being yours. Hmm. And so if you've got wingers who aren't pinned back defending the kick, all of a sudden, going down the hill, you've got a lot of areas to attack. I mean, I, 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 with, the, with the whole 50 22, I, I, I like it, I don't like it in equal measures, but you can't help but thinking if you had a really good 10, you're going to capitalise all day. I mean, Johnny Wilkinson must be gutted about the fact that, he, that this, this, this particular rule change didn't happen whilst he was still playing. Oh, I mean, God knows how many more points England would have had. And People, imagine people like Dan Carter. Oh, <laughs> you know the, these people who were dead ball specialists, yeah. but also could kick the ball anywhere on the pitch. Yeah. Johnny Sexton, probably benefiting yeah. from a little bit now. But yeah, you say Wilkinson, Dan Carter. These guys, yeah, I mean, these guys, could, these guys could yeah. kick the ball and la land it on a on a, a plate yeah. at the yeah. other end of the pitch. Yeah. Unbelievable skills. But. But this is something you don't see. Like you see it in international rugby. But you go through the premiership, not so much in the championship. As soon as you get going down to the national leagues, I'm not sure if it's confidence, I'm not sure it's ability, mm -hmm. or I'm not sure it's the way that teams are coached to play. But you do not see as many teams as willing to kick the ball away. I mean, you've, you've been at Asia for a, a couple of years, so you've seen yeah. more rugby than I have here just at Canterbury. Mm. So... so what well, do you think? Well, to be fair, it's very interesting. I, I think there's a lot of... Um, there's been... I, I've seen some really lovely fly halves play in and around the National Leagues. No, no um, I didn't play Asia, so you must have been watching someone else. <laughs> but um, at Asia, we were, we were blessed at times. We, we had a lovely player called Luke Daniels. He went on to uh, Ealing Trailfinders in Bristol. I think he's gone back to Ealing now. Uh, originally, he was a full-back. Then we played him at 10. Fantastic 10. Happy to break the line, but most importantly, very confident with the ball in hand, especially kicking out of hand. Then we've had players like James Lang as well, who's now up in Scotland, who was at Gwyn's. Again, they, these guys would have loved these kind of situations now. Uh, I mean, James Lang is still playing, but now he's moved into as an, outs an inside centre rather than the fly half. But you do want, you, in, in, within the whole National Leagues, it's, it's rare to find a fly half who really wants to go for it. Um, and in particular, one of the one things in, that I've chatted to Corks about before, and also Pratty, who was at DOR here before him. When's the last time you've seen a drop goal or a, a, a drop goal, an actual an actual routine being played out here? When's the last time you've seen? Yeah, it? so I've never seen it. I I I watched Canterbury and I played here a couple of years. Yada yada. I've never seen Canterbury set up for a drop goal set piece. Not for the first team. I've seen Jerome Way for the fifth team try and try and do something. So how did it go? Try, try and. Let's not talk about how it went. But he tried it. He tried it. As, as, a, <laughs> as, a, as a prop forward, you shouldn't be trying it. But he did it. And, uh, but, yes, yeah, so I've, I've never seen Canterbury really do it. And what that, I think, to me, personally, what that boils down to, correct me if I'm wrong here, is that you, there's no one in the squad who's got the, co the balls, the cojones, the minerals, whatever you want to call it, to go, I'm going to take this drop goal. Yeah. And if I miss, do you know what? I've missed. But what you need someone to do is going two-phase, 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 one more, one more, I'm here now, bang. Yeah. I want it. Put, it, put it to me, I'm going to have a go at it. We've had a few players around the club who've done it. And I dare to hesitate to say that Charlie Kingsman, um, he would do it every single day in the twos. Um, there's other people out there who might have a go at it in different teams. I don't know if playing for the ones is a bit too, like the pressure or the way they play is too much, but... Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, when I did, I, the last last time I had a conversation, I had the conversation with Corks about it, 
And his phrase was, we actually don't have anyone who's got the ability to do it. But, okay, but, but so that, hit, that's but, an interesting insight. But what frustrates me is, though, at the end of training sessions, at the end of pretty much every rugby training session I've seen, in terms of national ones, you'll have nearly every bloody player going for it as a drop goal as they leave. And most of the time, they're nailing them. Most of the time, yeah, they're... Okay, so that's I, we, we they're know that the pressure's not different there. They're no pressure. They're different when there's but, no pressure, because... But there must be ability there. Okay, see, so we watched last year in the champ in the Heineken Cup, whatever it's called these days, knockout rugby. It went to it went to kicks. <laughs> okay, and there was that we you saw in that game there that there was three professional rugby players, all all who probably would have been great kickers under pressure. Some of them couldn't slot it from between the posts. So the pressure pressure is one thing. And being out here on a Tuesday night and kicking it from God knows where or wherever is a different thing. But even you could <laughs> kick it on a Tuesday night. Debatable. <laughs> Debatable with my hamstrings. But um, I think yeah, I, I, all I can say is that you, know, you, you probably proved your point there. You, you've, won that, you've won that argument without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> but, so Westcombe Park are back out on the field. They're ready they, to go. Um, they look unchanged as well. From I don't believe there's been any changes. No, I haven't seen any, ro- I haven't seen any rotations. What, before the second half gets kicked off, I'm going to have to leave you subsequently, and I'm going to leave you in the, in the delicate hands of yourself. No worries. Or unless you want to uh, have a break as well, but I'll, I'll leave you to it for just for two no, minutes. No, that's fine. No worries, James. So as we're saying, we, the Westcombe Park team have just come out here now. It looks like there may well have been a change in the front row. Um, we're now just waiting for the Canterbury team to come out. And Grace is on the field as well. Uh, Corks is coming out now, as are the Canterbury players themselves. Again, probably hoping to build on the last five minutes of the first half. Um, again, they were in the ascendancy towards the end. It's going to be very, very tricky now as they will be battling up the slope. But this is Canterbury Slope. This is their home, their home pitch. You would imagine they actually know how to deal with that scenario. Looks like there has been a small change in the front row for Canterbury. Looks like Aaron Cooper has come on. <laughs> Referee's out there, the ball's in the middle of the park. He's just checking with his ARs. The second half begins. Westcombe Park kicking downhill. It's a long ball down, collected by Jesse De Vries. The ruck's been set up nicely. Canterbury are beginning to trundle the ball up pitch. Ball's been fairly safe so far, and Frank Frank Reynolds is tr- was aiming to find touch. It didn't find touch, and is now being recovered by Westcombe Park, just inside the the, uh, the half of Canterbury. Lovely turnover there at the breakdown by Jesse. Uh, helped with Harvey Ferno. Canterbury ball at the halfway line. Danny Harrier is screaming for the ball to come out to the right hand side. Canterbury are really playing with a little bit of an abandon here. Tyler Oliver has tr- made some great steps. The trundle the ball up high. It's completely illegal hit here. Awful challenge here, which could cause a bit of an issue here. Referee has called stop of play. That looked like a head on head. Just when you thought you got rid of me. Just when I thought you got rid of me, but you know what? You've come back at a really interesting time. Uh, Canterbury started going through the phases and t- side his own half. Made fantastic inroads before being hit. So illegally, he's still, he's still illegally. on the floor. So he so he, it looked all right. It looked shoulder on shoulder, or head on, or head on head. It was uh, uh, the sound wasn't great, and he is still down. This is so and there's a little missions. bit. Of, there's a little bit of confrontation going in front of us here as well. Natu- naturally, you're not going to be happy if someone's coming in on a cheap shot on one of your players. No, not at all. I mean, he came in from the blind as well. Um, there was no attempt to wrap. It was literally a case of, oh, I just need to get this guy down. It was, you know, it was ill-timed, and it was certainly, certainly it not very well. Obviously, there's some consultation going on here between the, the ref and the two captains. 
I mean, my going to is that uh, referee Neil Sweeney should be going to, to his pocket for this. I'd be surprised if he isn't. Yeah, so, and Tyler's still on the floor here, so it's going to be some sort of impact. Let me just have a word with the touch judge. Yeah, go for it, James. I mean, as James is just walking down there, I mean, the, the hit was not good in any way, shape, or form. So, I think it's going to, yeah, yellow card for, from the touch judge. <laughs> he, gave, he gave it early, but yeah, so yellow card. So, reduced to 14 men for 10 minutes, going uphill. In theory, you want to be looking at, what, seven points? Yeah, no, so this is, this is going to be an ah. interesting set for Cantry, because we said earlier that going up the hill is difficult. Hmm. Now, obviously, Westcom Park is down to 14. So it's going to be, can we actually execute something with our back line? Well, you can, but hope. I mean, we've been, we, we, if, we, if we go on the, literally the last five minutes of the, sec of the first half, you want to be still, obviously, being on the ascendancy. You want to continue applying the pressure. And we can, but hope here. But that was one hell of a hit there, which Todd overtook. So, right, we're in, we're in front of the post. We're 35 yards out. Frankie's got the ball. What? So we get, we're going to go for the corner here. I mean, I by think the looks of things. Yeah, I mean, there was a charming, no arms tackle there, you know, and so yeah, obviously the yellow card was necessary, but the, the concern there is your retaliation, you know, because the retaliation could easily then change that penalty and flipped it round. Oh, complete, I, I completely, ag I completely agree, but let's just good, good, but not great kick from Cantry. So we've Cantry find find themselves fifteen yards away from the trial line here with a de decent push going on Danny Danny Harrier is calling calling a calling the boys in from the back of the line here yeah it looks like they're be interesting to see what the call is so there's six in the line that's a six line out they fake to they've the front deep, but gone deep. gone deep and Harvey's ha picked it up he's right at the back the, that's the very well not good. it was if anything if anything the throw was against him yeah, he's had he to had lean to right it. over yeah. so country got advantage here really pushing hard now going through the phases Briggs back up on his feet and he's causing some trouble. Westcombe Park have got seven down. They're seven They've down this side. Down to the side. Gone. Now Nathan Wright takes a lovely loop around. Can't be just short of the line here. Great, great loop around from Will there. Will Woodington is great. And now that is going to be another yellow card. Yellow card. Here. Not intentional knock on. So <laughs> Charlie Kingsman was the first one to call that there. His hands are up in the air. Is it? Uh, and it's a penalty. It's a penalty try as well. Oh, so he's penalty, penalty try, try too. Canterbury. So there's no kick in that respect. So you're quite lucky in that respect that he doesn't have to kick, James. Yeah, yeah so that's another seven. So what, what does that put us to now? 19 to nothing to Canterbury. At the moment, there's uh, number seven for Ruskin Park is down, uh, Jordan DeHart. Um, but he's been down for a while. Because that was, that was Yeah, that no, was er previous. early, early on funny. in the play, look, he took a quite a knock. And... He's gone straight onto his back and he hasn't moved. Um, so that's a bit worrying for him with the season ahead. But anyway, so the game's about to restart. Canterbury about to see the ball. So theoretically at the moment, with no ch player change down here, Westcombe Park are down to 13. Yeah, at the moment. I look, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, the referee Neil's going to actually put a hold on play just while they get him sorted. Yeah, it, no, I've not seen, I've not seen the, 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 uh, the call from the fit zero so far. So... So we're waiting for the injury to be assessed. He's back on his feet, but he's not moving, he's not moving too at all. well. Well, most definitely be a replacement. Yeah, he's um, I'm not. He's, he's going towards the bench, but to be honest, he should he would be better well coming towards us on the on yeah. the short side of the touchline here. Exactly. So it looks like they have made the change there. I can't see the number yet, so I can't tell you who's actually come on for Jordan DeHart. So generally, when a National 1 side comes to Canterbury, this is the, the area or the time of the game where Canterbury have been put out of it in the last few warm-up games. So what you're looking at here is like a top-flight side. You can compete with them. You can go player for player for 40 minutes. So you can put it all, you can put it all out there. But in that second... Well, in that third, Rob, in that third quarter, and the fourth quarter especially, but the third quarter more, 
is when the fitness <laughs> really becomes the show because you come out from half time and you're just better. You're, you're just there. You're just you're at the breakdown. You're at the mall. You're just at the tackles quicker. Yeah, you certainly are, and I think it is. It is a very, very tough for um, for teams who they do come up. But we and can three on the full charge here. here. Brick with a big push off GR short of the halfway line. Canterbury playing some really flowing rugby. I mean, Canterbury just uh, literally have just attacked from their 22. An actual fact, Jamie's Jamie juggling Jamie the ball one-handedly coming through running, the line. Running like a big Tongan chap there with yeah. the ball in one hand. Yeah. Uh, just a bit of a turnover there, unfortunately. Tom Williams, as he was coming coming out trying to make the break. No, not no, Tom no, Williams. Ben, it looks it like there, there has been a change in there. So it's Ben, it's ben Cooper, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't Tommy Williams, it was, it was Ben Cooper who unfortunately got dragged a little bit in the tackle and knocked the ball on the contact. But again, another break, break, break down here. Oh, oh get out. Very frustrating there. And then just in front of us here, it's a cracking set of play from Canterbury there, just didn't come off on. Tom, what have you done? So Tom Williams has dislocated his shoulder. Um, so... Unfortunately, that's going to be a few weeks out for the little lad. Um, not good news for the squad. As we no. were saying, we weren't. We thought Tom Williams was on the pitch, but uh, um, yeah, dislocated shoulder. That's going to be four weeks out at least. Yeah, I mean, as you said, he did pop straight back in, but again, that's that's uh, that's, uh, that's quite a blow to be honest with you, the season so close. Yeah, no, it's, that's not great news. Good to see that Canterbury have got strength and depth in the squad. Yeah, well, I think um, Ben Cooper's come on now really quickly uh, and trying to impose his mark. I mean, he's going to have to as well, um, just to try and get up with speed and, and how the, the rest of the team are playing. But um, it's been quite, it's again, a little bit bitty, but Canterbury seems to want to attack now more going uphill than down. Yeah, no, no, it's cracking. Uh, that's what I was saying just now about, about the team, the top, top, uh, the top tier team really in the ascendancy, turning the screw with the fitness and the just general general ability of being being a team from the level above but be interesting to see how the rest of the half pans out unfortunately there at the at the um, at the scrum there's a penalty there and uh, Western Park being able to clear the lines down to ooh, about 10 meters in the there half. wasn't a great kick out from Western Park there and then so they're only about 10 meters outside their own 22 so Canterbury really do have a good good set place here and Jamie, Jamie Stevens again. up nicely. Ben Cooper actually giving a good ball away, continuing on the, on, on the down. Charlie Kingsman with a high step. It's a so really lovely leave there by Brick, actually, for the ball to go into Jesse DeVries. Kept hold of the ball under some immense pressure. Quick hands, gone. Charlie with a little chip through. That was possibly late, in my opinion. But the ball has so bounced perfectly. And Canterbury have scored again. And that's big. Seen some Morgan. exceptional play from Canterbury there. So initially, it didn't look like there was much on Canterbury from 10 metres inside their own half. Went back inside. The ball came back outside. A quick tap through the lineup. Quick hands from Canterbury, and then all of a sudden, a quick kick in behind. It sat up beautifully from Frankie Morgan, and he just threw. Grab a try. They'll. If anything, there was a shout for a high tackle in there as well on Charlie Kingsman. So great play from Canterbury. Let's just see now if Frank Reynolds can uh, can add to his tally already. Definitely the definitely the better side for a right-footed kicker as well. Yeah, this this has got to be right in his zone, really, hasn't it? This is this has got to be your bread and butter as a number ten. Mm. Lovely strike straight through the post. And he absolutely bisects that kick there. So that's that's the extra two for Canterbury. So that puts him up towards that 26 nil, 26 to nothing for Canterbury now. Canterbury really starting to turn the screw here. To be honest, at half time, Canterbury went in 12 nothing up. And I thought that that was a little bit flattering for them. Yep. What, do you, what do you think? No, definitely flattering for sure. What you found here, though, is the last two tries now have come from the fact that uh, Western Park have been reduced down to you know, reduced down in numbers. Uh, so obviously reduced down to 14, now down to 13. So the space is there, which is probably why Canterbury have now decided to actually throw a little bit of caution to win and go out wide quicker. No, yeah, exactly. Because in that whole first half, we really didn't see it go through the hands at all. 
No, and thankfully we have now. Uh, lovely, great take again. Again, this is uh, what, 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 did we, what did you say earlier about Brick just being an absolute bashing round? And he, he is, just I mean, proved he, it again. He rarely, he rarely gives you negative yardage, and that's what you want from any eight, isn't it? Lovely quick hands from Frank Reynolds. So he's been man handled quite badly there, I think, in the tackle. I think Frankie's been slightly unfortunate where the ball's coming out quite quick from the back of the ruck there from Ben. It's just from the, from the number nine who's just been subbed on. I don't think he's got the pace. I don't think he's adapted to the pace of the game quite mm. yet. It's, it's tough coming in from a sub to adapt to a pace of a game that is going quite quickly. This is quite a quick attritional game. Um, moving around the park quite quickly and it's always tough just to jump back in as a sub to really pick up the, that pace yeah i've got to say i think for me whenever i whenever i played and i didn't play at a very good level at all i'd much prefer to start the game than come on yeah it, it's exceptionally tough just to step on and really grasp the pace that the game's going at you know it's you've, yeah. got, you've got to step into something that's going at 100 miles an hour and you, you've come off the bench and you've really got to jump into that I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that most uh, most coaches will at halftime say, you know, it's nil-nil, it's brand new half, clean slate, that kind of thing. But you know it's what? The old cliches. The old cliches. But you know what? It's not. As much as they will say it, and you will hope and pray that your players will actually believe it, it's so not. And if you're not at the pace of the game, you don't get into it quickly, so you can cause issues. Here we go Park. They've got a scrum in can inside Canterbury's half. This is a chance for them to exert some real pressure. Now, obviously, because it. Oh. And so they look. It looks wow. to me like they've gone for an early engage. Is that is that correct? Yeah, no, certainly that's exactly what he's calling there. So, early so engage, can't we have got a free is kick? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the downside there for them is that that's a, a chance for them to relieve a little bit of pressure down there. They could have just gone through the phases. They've given Canterbury an easy out. But again, Frank Reynolds has not found touch. And and not only has he not have found touch, that. He's caught that within the five meter channel. Yeah. Well, out, well, outside of the five meter channel, inside his own half half. So it's, it's not close. But Charlie Kingsman now with another little chip over. Unfortunately, perhaps the the evening dew has just started to get onto the pitch. He's had a slip there, but it has worked out still well, well for Canterbury. Who, that wasn't Danny Harriot kicking that ball, was it? I mean, if it was, I don't think we could ever actually allow it to be said on there that it was. <laughs> yeah, it. that that was straight out of the drone way playbook <laughs> from the fifth team. <laughs> But I tell you what, what, I love watching Charlie Kingsman. He he's so electric as an as a player. You know, he's it. not. He's, I, I wouldn't say he's dependable. I, you you wouldn't want to put your mortgage on him. But I tell you what, he is electric. You never know what's going to happen. I and I think I mean yeah, Corks actually mentioned it, didn't he at half time? He said that he's the kind of guy who could be quite mercurial um, and does something slightly different. And you know what, he certainly can. This is the first time I've actually had a chance to actually see him play uh, because when he was down here for the last couple of years, he, he was here briefly, then he just decided to give, I think he gave, did he just he stop? Lost, he, he lost the love of rugby because Cause he was at the, year that he came back to, the year he came back to Canterbury, they were in that one and they were, they were in all sorts of trouble not playing great rugby. And naturally, if you're playing at 10, it's n you're not going to be very, very happy about that. So he lost a little, little bit of love, love for the game for a while. He came back. He played a little bit of third team last year. He's played a little bit of touch over the summer. And now he's back. And I'll tell you what, looks as good as ever. Yeah, certainly. Uh, certainly I certainly like it that his, his thought process to attack those little spaces so just behind the line. And so Canterbury on the charge here. Line out from the, from the opposition 22. They've punched it with a deep into their, in, in front of the post. Canterbury uh, got lucky there. Got lucky. Got interesting there, though. You see there? this sloppy with the distribution. They have, but it's interesting here. The referee's just given another another intentional knockdown, but he's not given a card. But they are still going so through the faces. We've we got, we got Frank Morgan screaming Frank for the ball out here. It. Charlie Kingsman's now got it. He's just inside. Frank's collects it. Really nice pickup on the ground there. Yeah, yeah. It was a great distribution. From Charlie left him asking, asking him a little bit there. That's a cracking line there from Dave, uh, Dave Overhand coming from out to in. You might recall towards the end of the first half, I mentioned a period of play where Canterbury didn't have anything in front of the post down the other end. Mm. And I was saying that there was no one coming onto the ball streaming hard. Mm. There was no one in the 10 channel. What we've just seen from Dave there, I mean, he got the ball stripped on him, but that's another thing. But he was steaming onto that ball. He really wanted to cause trouble. Yeah, and it's always, it's always tough to defend, isn't it? Especially when you and the ball's constantly going, going one particular way on the pitch. If they then come back on that angle, 
very hard to defend against. What? The reason it makes it so hard to defend because when you're looking at the ball, your body, your body is fixed. You're on your two, you're obviously you're on your two feet, but your hips, your hips are fixed. So whichever way you're looking, that's where your hips are fixed. And if the ball suddenly comes the other way, you've got to change the whole body angle. Yeah. And, and it, you just can't, you just can't make that tackle. No. Looks like so it's a really it. good attacking opportunity here for Canterbury. So we, we Canterbury find themselves on the five meter line. Yeah, so on Danny this Herrick near club side, club, club side line. So Danny Herriot's coming up, and I believe that's Elliot Lusher coming back. Yeah, on, right? young young Elliot's coming on here. Another opportunity for a good young lad. The set's good. good the set's good. Nathan Morris is at the back there. I'm sure he'd like to have a de debut try. And it's, it's a great like trundle. It's a great trundle over. You can be over. If they got it down. Now Very that, nice finish that, there. It was a perfectly executed set piece. Who's coming up off the floor with the ball there? I think, it, well, I believe. I think everyone. It's either Brick. It was either, it was either yeah, I think it probably. Oh, who's getting the cuddle? All three, the three bearded men are giving each other a cuddle. I don't yeah, know I think they're all just happy that it happened. Tell you what, so, so what happened there? We could there? call that a team try. Yeah, so what happened there if Canterbury on the five meter line? You've got the line out. They've executed it very well. And what I said earlier is what they've done very well here. So on the drive, everyone in the line is twisted their body almost 45 degrees. You're pushing towards the post, and they've made that rolling ball go absolutely beautifully. So if you're pushing someone head on, it's very easy to defend. If you get them on an angle, all of a sudden, it's very hard for them to push back against you. We've got the kick just in front of us here. Yeah, a very good kick. And that's very good kick indeed. That that w is what makes Frankie very frustrating as a player to watch because that that's not an easy kick. And he's bisected the post there, but yeah. yet earlier on in the game he's missed a couple of easy ones. He certainly has, and that's the biggest frustration I think about trying to find a, a fly half uh, who will be dependable. Um, and it's not just saying dependable in terms of you know he turns up every day, comes to training, he's a good lad. We're talking about dependable from the team. Please. So we, we start here from Western Park with a decent short kick to really put Canterbury under pressure. Looks picked, like up, picked up by Canterbury mm. and uh, now they're on the, f on the front foot again. They are. That's young Harvey taking the ball up there in, into the breakdown again. Ball slow to recycle but it's good. Ball going out through the hands. Uh, so look. Was that a knock on the tackle? No. Hasn't no, he gave the give down. That yeah. was interesting there. Yeah. A little bit of afters there. And I'm, it looks like the A, the, uh, the, the, the AR has stepped on there. And I think Phil, the AR there, is going to be talking to Neil Sweeney's ear. But the ball is still in play. But number 10, it looks like, from Westcombe Park, Matt Harrison was getting a little bit involved with the arse with Frankie Great Jr. Great chip through there. But, there. but the country are on the push through here as well as they punch into Westcombe Park's half. The question is, back on from the bin? So it wasn't on there. He looked like Frank uh, Canterbury number ten looked like he really wanted to distribute that, but yeah. it just wasn't on. So he's set and go again. I tell you what, that's quite good to see. Not just throwing it for the sake of throwing it. I think what he's got to do there, then, when he does have that situation, it's not on. You're just going to have to literally put your head down and run hard. Yeah. Just try and get those yards and as you can. I tell you what, all the time you've got the ball, the opposition can't score. It's, it's it sounds stupid, it's, but it's no. basic. Just need to freeze with a little give and go. And here and we go. to Frank Morgan out on the side. He now wants to take them on. Again. It's now been called. It's an unfortunate, unfortunate one to so the, the head. So a bit of altercation just, just in front and of called us. It. This could be a little bit of retaliation from what's just happened earlier on down the line. It looks like Neil Sweeney is going to be going to the bin. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see what the AR is going to say because the AR saw something earlier and did come onto the pitch. I would, I would suggest that number 12 for Westcombe Park went down holding his head there and he, he's all of a sudden back up uh, like uh, like he's at a kid's yeah, I mean, yeah, almost like a yo-yo there. He's gone down and come straight but back anyway, up. It's so very so interesting. The ref's calling, the ref's having a word here. And it looks like, it looks like it's the Westcombe Park player that has caught the infringement. To me, it looked like the Westcombe Park guy was get the number 10, but... Mm. 
So they are calling them over. So an interesting conversation going to be happening here. This is when I wish I still had my ref mic going on. Well, maybe yeah. I should get that for next time. Yeah, so we can hear what's going on. What are we saying there, Phil? Oh, so so Harvey's been given a given a red here from Canterbury. So unfortunately not, for I'm Canterbury, not, we've I'm just not, been told. I'm not quite sure what the infringement was. But Harvey Ferno has been given a red card. It must, so it must be what's been struck to the face punch. Yeah, it must it must have been for throwing a throwing a hit at the opposition. Can't be anything else. But you know what? That player went down very very easily. That's a real shame for Harvey because he's a, he's had a cracking game so far. Yeah, no, no, exactly. We were talking earlier about young players breaking into Canterbury and really setting themselves up for a mould. And Harvey's been one of those guys that we've talked about all game that's had a really, really good 60, 70 minutes of rugby. And unfortunately, his temper's got the best of him there. Hmm. We all know that he's a better player than that. He knows he's a better player than that. So let's hope, let's hope that this is a real kick up the arse and he comes out the, comes out the other side. Yeah. Again, it's a pre-season game, so let's hope he learns. Yeah, and, and again, yeah, it's, it is pre-season. He is young. He's still learning. Um, but it's going to be interesting now to see because Canterbury now obviously are now down to 14. Let's um, see how they deal with that that uh, little bit of adversity. So it is 26 nil to Canterbury. We're approaching the end of the the second half play. Mm. Canterbury down to 14. Westcombe Park have the advantage. Decent kick. Put Canterbury back inside on the on the edge of their own 22. Here. Yeah. In this second half, we haven't really seen Westcombe Park execute many phases of rugby. No, not at all. And I think, I think. <laughs> Kyan, how are you doing, mate? You're right. You good? So yeah, so we're interrupted by a young Kyan Braithwaite there. Who's a, yeah. He used to play for the ones for a little bit. Looks like he's a little, little bit out of the mold, but he thinks he's going to be back in January. But yeah, so we we'll jump back into the game here with Westcombe Park, really exerting a little bit of pressure on Canterbury. Apologies, apologies, it is 33 nil to Canterbury. So at the moment, Canterbury are doing a decent enough li uh, defensive line here. Looks like Westcombe Park actually have lost the ball from their line out. Uh, Canterbury now going to be going through the phases and obviously will be trying to execute and get a bit of an exit. So looking to aim up to do. Frank Reynolds has relieved the pressure a tiny bit there. Not to get again. I'm, I'm not going to let you sound like a broken record, but I would have expected a little bit more there. I tell you what, I'm going to jump to his defence here. We, he's going up the hill. He's going up the hill. It's, it's, it's a toughie. It's a toughie. But yeah, he's ex he's exited the country well, relieved the pressure. That's the main thing. That's yeah. the main thing. But you want more. Yeah. Uh, you might remember a chap from Old Eltaniums. He played number ten. He was a quite a rotund fella at number ten. He was quite often the top point scorer in that two for a number of years. He didn't go around the park very well, but he had an exquisite boot on him. Mm. And and that's what kept him in the game, you know. He could get them out of tight positions and also apply pressure when it, when it was needed. But Westcombe Park really... Sorry, yeah, oh, but oh, no, no, but they've literally just they had a great opportunity there. It was definitely uh, an, over, uh, an, uh, an overlay there on the left-hand side. But somehow the player's gone and thrown a haymaker which has gone absolutely nowhere but now it's gone into Canterbury's Canterbury's opportunity now Frank Reynolds has seen Frank Reynolds out by himself he's gone for the chip and chase but their number 12's got back really well to retain the yeah, ball now now very, playing through the hands, well. but it's a phenomenal tackle coming in there which is superb from Will Waddington which has put them right under so, pressure so out of nowhere we've had a really exciting phase of play the ball's gone from in front of Canterbury's post up here cross field kick Frank's charged the ball down. The man who's made of glass is down again, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Jamie J looks like, to be fair to Jamie in that situation, it looks like he's taken one into he the ribs. Take one. It, it was really refreshing to see Cantry willing to do something out of the ordinary, though. Mm. So, cross field kick into Frankie, Frankie Morgan Jr. out here on the wing. Nothing. We haven't seen anything like that today. We haven't seen anything like that in the last few matches from Canterbury. Mm. It's quite nice just to see a change up, really. Yeah. Again, maybe maybe Frank Reynolds is just having uh, is just beginning to grow into this game a little bit more. I think maybe he's actually 
throwing a bit of caution to wind. But then I suppose you can do that when you are 33 nil up. Yeah, co correct. And it's only a friendly game. Well, as, I, as I said before, as I said before, sorry, when I, the, the teams that we play for in the threes, fours, fives, never have any problem with someone trying something. So why not just yeah, give it a go? This is the opportunity to do it. Oh, absolutely. Well, lucky enough, Jamie's got up now. It looks like he just had a little bit of work on his elbow there. Um, but as you said, he's, he is, he's a cantery stalwart, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo young Jamie Stevens. He's, he's only a shadow of his father, Kev Stevens, who plays, plays number 10 for the five. So as, as we all like to remind him, but he's doing okay. So Kandri with the put into this scrum here, just inside Westland Park's half. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because Danny, Danny has certainly had the beating on the last on the last loose head. So this is the first scrum without him. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. It's interesting to see Kandri's back line set up here. Talk, talk me through that a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got 10 and 12 stuck really close together. It suggests they are going to probably try and batter the, batter the ball up from Tom Best. Or well, it could be a decoy. So then we come around the back here, dumped out the back, and we can be a word to wide really well for Charlie Kingsman with a little nudge. You know what? I'm fine with that. I, really, I, I have no issue with just know, that little nudge through, so just to apply a bit more pressure again. Do you, know, do you know how close that was to being 50 22? Two yards, two yards further back when Charlie kicked it. Then yes. And then all of a, su all of a sudden, you change the, the gameplay changes completely. Obviously, it wouldn't have been. We couldn't, it couldn't have been here because we started with the scrum inside their heart. Mm. But when in that instance, that. with running ball in hand, we were so close. It was very close to being a very different, different setup. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, again, it's, again, these whole, you know, when you do get a new rule in, do people actually put put a bit of time and effort in on the training pitch, going, this is how we're going to play this? Oh, completely. Yeah. So it's a bit of a messy lineup for Westcombe Park here. They've tied it up a little bit just inside their own 22. The ball's bouncing around. But it's gone to their fly-off. He seems to be uh, energetic at times, perhaps a little bit overly so. But uh, it is uh, so ball So the fly half's on the, ball, on the floor. So the, nine, the number nine's been forced with the exit ball. Now that's an ugly kick from him. That's put him under pressure there, hasn't he? Oh, it's, n it's not a great pass across the pitch, but Charlie Kingsley clears it up well. Frankie Wolf now cutting inside. Looking for the offload. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite execute. There's two coming through there. It's going to be counteract. And it is. Oh. oh, wow. Wow. Unfortunate for Western Park there because they've done they've done the hard work. Yeah. They've got there. They've turned the ball over. Their number nine's picked it off the deck. They just couldn't execute that final pass. And I think that's been a tell for them, hasn't it, generally speaking, throughout the whole game, is that final pass. Yeah, they... Been, it's been frustrating for Westcombe Park because they've put in the hard work. They've got there. They just haven't executed at the final moments where it really counted. As I think as a coach for them, you'd be very frustrated. You'll probably come back from, from this game and just go, guys, we're so close to, to have done something amazing here today. You know, And it's, it's just one of those games. It could just be one of those games for them. Comple so oh, can well... As we, say that. As, as we throwing, say that, can be throwing the ball away, and Westcombe Park trundle, well, not trying to fly over the line for their first score of the day. I ha have to. That's a frustrating intercept there. Yeah, I have to put it out there. I think that since Tom Tom Williams has come off, um, we've looked a bit looser than we were, but. You know, different player, different style. Yeah, certainly. I, I think I think being Ben Cooper. I think he tries to get the ball away a little bit quicker. I think what he's doing is perhaps not surveying what options he has um, enough. He's not using his peripherals um, because that pass was certainly not on. If he'd looked up, he would have seen that there was there was two Western Parks to just the one Canterbury player on it's that It's always thing. tough. It's always tough. Remember Canterbury down to 14 from mm. the red card to Harvey, uh, Harvey Furno. Yeah. So that always makes it a little bit more difficult. You're always a man down. So theoretically, they've always got the number, number advantage when they're defending. So yeah, it does. Right. does make it hard. Yeah, it certainly does. The kick to come here from for Westcombe Park. Decent strike, but it's not online at all. I would suggest that that was being very generous when you said decent strike. <laughs> It's 33 points to five here at the Marine Ground. I'm not so handsome. <laughs> well, 
Let's see how Canterbury respond here. Again, it's still down to 10 men, as we've already mentioned here. It's 33 points to five. So this is, this is really interesting for Canterbury. So good, this is going to set the precedent. Deep kick on the, right on the 22. How's the follow up? Not quite there. I think that is. I think the number twenty has come on for Canterbury. Is that the young lad Sharif Lan? Yes, right? he's just uh, he's just stepping over the halfway line now. Western Park have gone on the absolute break from that kickoff, and they have literally scampered down the field to around about ten yards out. Yeah, a few decent offloads, and then they've Canterbury. got the penalty as well for not rolling away from Canterbury. And they played it quick. I will tell you what, if he'd run straight, he could have pulled another penalty there because I don't believe the Canterbury back line had set themselves. Nice cut inside the line. Second try there for Westcombe Park. So we were talking about this earlier, um, about how you have to press the line. So the kick from Canterbury wasn't terrible from, from the restart. Came to the 22 here. But what Canterbury didn't do, they didn't press the line, and it left mm. a huge hole. More importantly, this hole was right in the middle of the field. This dog leg came up and all of a sudden they're nine once he'd stepped to one person had a whole whole area of grass for him to run into and all of a sudden one two three offloads they're right in front of the post they are and i think i think canterbury will be a little bit disappointed with themselves here and i know you know they are down to 14 men but there are certain things which you know should have should have happened there especially from the the restart perhaps a little bit too deep for my liking uh, the chase was fairly okay but neither of the two players who got to the who got to the player made their tackle stick and that's the that's where it started yeah so basically we're going to go for a, essentially the same thing again here so let's let's see let's see how canterbury hmm. execute this differently for me i prefer it shorter i don't know about you james i prefer, I prefer a shorter I kick I so you can challenge or no, you can no, go no, really no. deep i don't mind a deep kick but you've got to run off of the line you've yeah. got to have that big yellow wall or big whatever wall yeah. you want to call it well, so that's uh, a lot more competitive 30, it's 33-12 here he's gone really short and, and, and that's Jesse that's Jesse. Picked, it up, picked it up in there he's made a, a good six seven hard yards here ball's gone back in Will McCall's Will McCall, come back on known, known as Bacon is. he is you know what he's been a revelation since the beginning of last year I, yeah, lo I, I love his attitude. I love his, the way in which he he, he I was I was fortunate on. enough to play in Will McCall's. I think it was his first ever full men's game of rugby away at Snowdown for Canterbury wow. Freeze, and he it, they were like pins at a bowling alley. The opposition. He just ran through them. And anyway, back to the game here. So Tommy Best nudges a cracking little little grubber through. Oh, and push him out to get the advantage just on the five meter of Westcombe Park. So that's what you want to see there, isn't it? I mean, from that little kick through there from Tommy Bess, you've got you've got Jesse steaming in, you've got Frank Morgan steaming in, and all three of them then take the Westcombe winger out onto the side uh, into yeah. the sideline. No, no, the great, great play all around there. Amazing cracking kick by Bessie seeing the corners. In to me, that's that's not what Canterbury do enough of. They they can't see the holes in behind. Yeah. Tom Best there executed very well. Not only that, a good a kick is only as good as its chase. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean you, you, you're absolutely right there. And I mean the chase was exactly what you expected. As I said, three pl three players coming on that player to get him out. Now we've got the light out. You've got to be hoping for a right, little trundle over, what do you think, James? So can we a decent push here? It's, it's pulled set, down but then sacked. for a new for old Westcombe Park, so the ball's at the back there, but I can see the Westcombe Park player going straight through the middle. I think he's turned it over there. He has. Ball's lost. So Canterbury needs to defend this one here. So Canterbury needs to drop a want. wing on our side just here. Yeah, Charlie Kingsman's come out from fullback. He's picked it up and he's gone from the edge of the ruck. That's a cracking ball from the number so, And the 21 doesn't, and doesn't look like a slow chap. No, he's, he's going and going. I mean, he's run 40 yards there to get hauled down. A they are picking at the edge of the ruck, but now Canterbury are going to be done. I think it's probably for offside, I guess. The ball is flown out wide to the left of us. Straight through one tackle. Nearly through the second, but he's a great offload, and that's the third try for Weston Park. You have to admit, that that's great flowing rugby from Weston Park. Again. However, however, on the flip side, as, as someone who's with my Canterbury hat on here, yep. as, as I do, it just wasn't very good in many areas there. 
So, so we we've lost the line out. We won the line out. We've lost the ball in the line out. We've missed two or three tackles inside their 22. We've missed a couple more tackles and on the halfway line, and then it's worked. So, so now Westcombe Park are kicking for an, an additional two, and all, all of a sudden, they're not back in the game, but but they're making a they're making a contest of it. Yeah, they are, and I think if we're back in National Run, this is what I'd be calling squeaky bum time because you've just you've just lost, you've just taken the gloss off your perfor off the performance. Um, it was a miss there from from the kick there, so it ends up being 33-17. But um, this is where you now need to get together as a team and respond brilliantly. Now they had, I thought, respond brilliantly with that line out and them all, but then getting turned over, just a completely different kettle of fish. I would suggest they try and play exactly the same. I'd prefer a nice little short one again. Um, depends on how they set themselves up, Westcombe Park. They look yeah. wary, though, on this now. Now, Could you switch play and go to the opposite side? No, no. For me, you stick with what works. And it worked. It w it obviously, they lost the ball from the line-out, but to get to that position, it worked. So he's gone with a high, high one, which is a great opportunity that for a chaser. Jesse tried to get, but it was blocked there. Westcombe Park ball has and been beautifully turn turned over by Elliot Lusher. That was fantastic. Floor. James, that's exactly what you were talking about, how to jackal there. Yeah. You know, he, he, he's the second man in. He, he, rode, he rode the tackle, and he just pulled it off the floor beautifully. Now, this Canterbury on the break, really opening their legs. They're pushing Westcombe Park back into their own 22. So this is a typewriter moment, surely, James, if they can keep hold of the ball and come back and get in the opposite side. The referee's called it's the ball a bit free. Dirty. It looks like Westcombe Park have turned it over. They certainly have. And just inside their 22. Crossing, possibly. But I know it. Ah. Oh. To be fair, so Jamie can, Stevens so has come back and stripped him beautifully. Ball, ball can be, can be got it back. Some, Very nearly a second one. Some would say. Yeah, I mean, again, there, <laughs> Ben Cooper's gone and thrown one out there um, and not really looked at what was in front not of him. for the first time today. No, no, certainly not. A Westcombe Park player was on it like a flash, but he was actually called back from the referee. I didn't see what he was coming back for. I guess it must be an infringement of the ruck. I'll tell you what. What's the chap's name there? Is, it in the number, is he in the number 11 jersey for Westcombe Park? I would not, I would not like to take him on in a foot race. No, and to be honest with you, they, ha they have got quite a few quickies out there. Yeah, no, correct. He's He hasn't looked tremendous around the park. But ball in hand, once it's opened up, he well, wants to go. as soon as he gets his legs going, he's, there's no stopping him. Yeah. And we execute the line-up quite well here. Again, got, going for the mall. About to set up another drive Seems to be slightly better, uh, slightly better set up this time, but Westcombe Park is still trying because... Because the player's technically not look, look, look go, let go of his first original bind, he can cause a problem. But Bacon McColl is on his way. They're trundling over. You've got to, you've got to love a Bacon. And, th and there he is, Will McColl, the absolute bowling ball. I, I kind of got interrupted saying it a little bit earlier, but I was fortunate enough to play in Will McColl's first adult game when he played away at Snowdown. And he's an absolute bowling ball. And he's shown it just there. He just... He just rolls round tackles, he rolls over tackles, he rolls over players, he just punches through people. He is a tough man to get to the floor. He certainly is. He actually reminds me of a, uh, a player at Isha called Matty Lowe, so I used to call Truffle Hunter. Um, because he just seemed to just find his way, ground his way along the ground and score these tries out of nowhere. Uh, and sometimes you would actually just bring him on just hoping for a try and he would, pr he would produce. And there Frank he goes, again. decent kick from Frankie there. And then that, that is the final whistle. So what's the final score here? So the final here? score tonight we have is Canterbury 40, 40 and Westcombe Park 17. So that was a nice end to the, to, the, uh, to the game there, I think, James. Yeah, I mean, the last try there by Will McCall perhaps glossed over the last 10 minutes of Canterbury kind of, I don't want to say falling apart, but certainly taking their foot off the gas. Yeah, uh, 
Again, you know, you spoke about, um, in essence, about the physique and, and the fitness of, of, of players, and I think that it's, it's, it's these kind of games here that Canterbury, when you're playing a side which is just below you in terms of league, your fitness may well just be a little bit higher, which meant that when they did go down 14, yes, points were shed, but you felt that they had the opportunity to constantly finish the game through nicely. Yeah, no, so it was... Uh, it was it they did, they did finish it off pretty well in the end. They made, they made it a little bit difficult for themselves, but, but, they, but they, got, they got there on. As I said earlier, I think it's more important about the process rather than the final score today because it, it, it's a pre-season game. Yeah. There was pe there's periods that country will walk away from today going, tell you what, we did really well. Hmm. Equally, there's a lot of areas where Matt Cork is going to have to pull them away on Tuesday and Thursday and go, to tell you what, lads, we were not very good there. No, and I think that if you were playing against a team perhaps a little bit more ruthless in the first half, the scoreline would be very different right now. Um, but I like—I tell you what—I like a quite a few of the Reskin Park players there. In, in particular, I, I thought the both the wingers were very good, uh, and one of their replacements was well. I don't think I've seen many fast from the, on the on the track tonight. He was I, superb. I, from talking to the Weston Park coaching staff pre-game and from hearing about from the Canterbury coaching staff what Westcombe Park are up to this year it would not be a surprise that Westcombe Park are up in that two next year mm. they spent a lot and invested heavily into their coaching staff and also also into their play their playing squad not just top level players they're not bringing in ex-pros or ex like Premier League players they're investing decently into their squad so it'll be interesting to see how they how they fare this year, and if if they can if they can then make this step up to be to be at this level. Because from what we saw today, they didn't look too far off it. No, not at all. And I mean, again, if their hands were just slightly better at times, it could have been a very a very very different scoreline tonight. Uh, so I think that generally speaking, I think their coaches will go away from this game actually not worrying about the score so much, but actually being really happy with some of their processes. Yeah, yeah, no, completely agreed. So. That's, I think that's a wrap on Canterbury's pre-season games now, isn't it? So yeah, so yes, that's that's the, that's the final pre-season game. Obviously, then you've got next next. I believe it's next week. I think they're back here. Canterbury away. Are they away next week to? Oh, I'd have to have a check on my on my list. But um, I think what we're going to find there is, is that I think Canterbury are away at North Walsham. North Walsham on the first September, and then our first home game. Local local derby on the on the uh, the tenth here against Tunbridge Judders and yeah, that will and that will be a big well, game that yeah. will be you, a big you, game for country because the because Judds are a very well drilled outfit they certainly are you never want to lose to Judds in any way shape or form and I think um, I think they'll go from this and they'll be very happy going into North Walsham next weekend and I'm really going to be looking forward to seeing what they can do at home against yeah. Tunbridge I'm really excited to see what the rest of the season has ahead. And I hope everybody else can join us for some more streams um, for the rest of the year. Yeah, so I think what we'll do, we'll, um, once the, the players are in the huddle at the moment, I think we're going to go over there and try and chat to Matt Corker uh, and get his, his, get his thought processes on it. Uh, James, I'll go and try and grab him for you. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Let's try and get a little bit of insight so to see what's happened. It's, it's always interesting because obviously we're sat here on the touchline giving it giving it all of our our insight but let's uh, see what somebody else has to say So we've got 
director of rugby, Matthew Corker, coming over to us for, for a little for a little bit of chat here. Um, so, Matthew, tell me, tell me how. Like preseason, obviously the result doesn't overly matter, but it's more about the process. So, so how did it how did it go for you tonight? I, I, we really asked our lads to to have a physical reaction. Last week we went down to Brighton, we lost by a point, and it, it wasn't the rugby as much as our physicality that really let us down. And um, I, I think we showed that today. That's exactly what we wanted to see. You, you can't win in this game unless you win that physical confrontational battle. And we came out to win collisions and. When we bolted on sort of accuracy in our execution, that's where that first try came from in the first half, and that was really well taken, and we sort of kicked on from there. It took, for me, it looked like the boys were a little bit in the hutch for the first half an hour. They, look, they took a little bit to warming up. That's going to happen. That's pre-season. That's okay. So what is the most exciting thing for you going forward this season? What are you, who, which player, which process, what, are you, what do you think is going to really set Canterbury apart from everybody else? We get really excited by our attack and moving the ball. We know that. We, I've learned that in, the, in my five years here, and that's what gives us energy. And w we can't play a really rigid game plan because it's just not interesting enough for us. So we like to move the ball, and I think when we bring the accuracy, like, we look fantastic. People say about us that when we're good, we're amazing, but we also have this other side that we can really be quite... <laughs> the old Jekyll and Hyde approach. Yeah, and, and our real challenge this season is to actually just bring some consistency. Those first 25 minutes was pretty much, for me, um, dominated by our in ill discipline because we gave away so many penalties. We couldn't actually get a foothold in the game and we're just going backwards. And as soon as we cut that off, the last 15, 20 minutes of the first half, that's when we actually were able that's, to play. And that's what we want. That's exactly what the brand that you want to, you want the boys to be playing. Yeah, and, it was, and it was really exciting to see. So fingers crossed for next week. Absolutely. And we, we're definitely heading in the right direction. It, what's great is now we've got some really good stuff for us to review. And um, I, I think if we can just nail down some of our, uh, potentially just a little bit more concentration when we're getting out of our 22, we, we, that's where the, the sort of ambition to move the ball can hurt you a little bit. But um, we uh, also did like a 50 metre crossfield kick and made like 50 yards off of it. So it's, it's just trying to be able to see those opportunities. And yeah, I tell you what, that was one of the most exciting things I've seen Canterbury doing in a long time. And I tell you what, it, it's amazing to see some, a team attack with no shackles on yeah. and just, just go boy tell you what we've got what Charlie King and we've got Frankie in here you can boy just do what you bloody want to do because there's going to be some yeah. excitement out there we believe like the game of the future is like an all court game it's going to be kicking running and passing and that's what we're trying to get the lads prepared for it we could definitely play a really rigid framework which a lot of the teams in our league are doing but that's not where we see the game going so Would we're trying to be remotely concerned about again just around the fringes there the ruck that's Westcombe Park exploited those fringes again. Yeah, we in terms of our physicality that in defence we definitely went there and our ball carrying. The way that the framework that we use, you have to be really efficient at the ruck because you want to keep as many boys on their feet. So if we lack that efficiency and we don't actually remove those threats, that's when you do really come under pressure. So like you say, so we just keep building, not making an excuse, but the hard pitches is obviously. I think it sort of compressed a lot of the contact to the back end of pre-season, so we're not catching up, but I think it's a little bit of a hangover from that. We won't keep you any longer, Corks. Thank you very much for your oh, time. absolute pleasure. How's, how's the commentating gone, boys? You'll find, it when, you'll find out when you watch it back uh, tomorrow. And then get it you've been there. sticking the boot in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too right. Absolutely. I wouldn't expect any less. Yeah. Alex, Veal, Alex Veal for director of rugby, that's what I say. Uh, it was only a maritime. <laughs> cheers, 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 boys. Cox, thanks. And we're looking forward to next week. And I think that about brings us to a wrap here tonight at the uh, Marine Travel Ground. So it's been a cracking night of rugby again. Friday night under the lights never yeah. fails to disappoint. No, never and does. we are very much looking forward to the season to kicking, kicking in in full swing. Yes, absolutely. So hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Um, other than that, lovely being with you, James. Yeah, and you as well. Good night. And if you weren't with us, get home safe. If you're, not, if you're already at home, enjoy the rest of your night. Take care now. Bye-bye.